two, one. Welcome, everyone, to episode 233 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Eric. Will. Corey. Uh, today's topic is our 2016 games preview. Usually we split these up into two episodes, but I think we're only going to do one this year. Um, I feel like a lot of the ga- the unscheduled releases are probably not going to come out this year, and we, we each picked a, a handful of them to, to cover for this, this week's episode. So and that's our main topic. Anybody have anything you want to tease for later on in the episode? I do. What do you got? Played some Dying Light. Nice. Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. Really? Yes. Was that one you didn't play last year? No, I didn't play that Metal Gear Witcher. So oh. I'm going to try and hit all of them as early as possible. So you played Metal Gear 5. Yeah. Nice. GSV. Oh, yeah. I played Soma mm-hmm. and Rocket League. <laughs> nice. And that's it. Okay. Corey, over three weeks? No, that's not it. What have you played since the last episode? Oh, I episode? beat episode one of Life is Strange. Okay. So we can talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Battlefront, I've been playing with Alex. That's, oh, yeah. That's, that's been, really it. Yeah. Ro- Somebody's got to fucking take Rocket League from me. It's literally ruining my gaming. Hmm. That's a little more difficult than taking a I know, FIFA disc. If it's digital. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> On two platforms. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Corey, anything you want to tease? Yeah, I fully intended to play a lot of two more obscure games, the Super Mario Remaker, the Ooh. PC version that somebody's building. Yeah. Which I actually did play a little bit of, but I'll explain why I didn't play more of a little bit later on. And then the other one is uh, Twilight Rising, the Zelda-inspired MMORPG. Huh. That's pretty cool. But don't get too excited, because... It kept crashing every time I tried to create an account. So Got that's about yeah. all I'm going to say about that. But I was really looking forward to playing it and talking about it. But Well, I want to hear about it at least because I'm sure you did a little research on it. A little. What's, yeah. this, what's this called, Corey? <laughs> Twilight Rising. Okay. Oh, and then uh, the only thing I'm going to tease is we're going to be talking about the, the big news this week, which is the Oculus Rift price. So we'll be talking about that a little bit during little bits. At least I'm sure we'll talk about it for a few minutes. So, uh, without further ado, let's get right into the episode, shall we? Sure. Uh, so I'm first. Uh, I have January. I'm not going to cover the games that already came out in January because they're already out. So we will start with January 12th. On January 12th, uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles India is coming out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It is the second part of the Assassin's Creed Chronicles series. It takes place in 1841 India when the Sikh Empire is at war with the East India Company. So these are the, uh, I guess they're called 2.5 dimensional side-scrolling platformer type games. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks interesting. Um, I've heard mixed things about the Assassin's Creed Chronicles series. Just like the main series. Yeah, I guess. So Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to look <laughs> at it. Well, Yeah, I actually have one of those games on my loadout too, Dan. Um, and I watched a video of it because I really not sure I heard anything about it until now. Right. And it kind of reminded me of a game like Mark the, uh, Mark of the Ninja. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, with the ability to, you know, once you get to a corner to go around it, that's where the point five dimensions comes yep. from. Just adding a little bit of that third dimension. Yeah. It looked cool. Um, yeah. But apparently, like you said, I think the Metacritic score... Uh, is relatively low for for China. Yeah. Uh, next on my list, Gemini Heroes Reborn for Xbox One. It's a, I guess, the first person action game set in the Heroes Reborn universe, the television show. So when I read that, I didn't have any more interest in it. I I do want to watch Heroes Reborn, but the those games tend to not be great. So. Mm-hmm. No more on that. Uh, also on January 12th, Gone Home Console Edition is coming to the PS4 and Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Is it 20 <laughs> bucks? I don't know, actually. I hope not. No, I'm, I bet you it is. I'd be Probably. shocked if it wasn't. It's going to be a full $60 game. <laughs> $60 for two hours worth of walking around. You get to walk around your neighbor's house now. <laughs> your house and your neighbor's house. Because your neighbor has naughty pics of... <laughs> <laughs> Not, naughty selfies I don't know I, moving on Tharsis I don't think this was here when I did my research earlier Tharsis for P- PC and PS4 
I'm just going to click on it because... Surprise game. Clickbait. Oh, I did look at that one. And I didn't. none of it really made sense to me, so... Tharsis. We'll skip that. Tharsis, yeah. Uh, also on the 12th, The Banner Saga is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. The first one, yep. right? Yep, the first one. Okay. The second one is due at some point this year. Don't know. No release date yet. That's a good one if you haven't played it. Yeah. I, I, really, this yep, I really like the Banner Saga. Um, it's good stuff. And I probably only 20. I think it was 20 bucks, maybe yeah. like, or 25. It seems like a $20 buy yeah. from what I remember. I would say 30 tops, but I don't think it was 30. I think it was 20. Yeah, I I think like it, it was, was 20. 1999 or whatever. Um, and then also on the 12th, a game called That Dragon Cancer for PC, Macintosh, and Android. Now. This was an interesting game. It's a game about a family story involving their child, Joel, and his, his diagnosis of cancer as a one-year-old. It's a true story of the Green family who wanted their story told via an interactive medium. They didn't feel like a movie or whatever would um, portray their story as well as a video game would. Just sounds up my alley. Um, it's got a really neat-looking art style, too. Uh, I probably will not play it, only because emotionally i don't know if i could handle that yeah seems like it's going to be an emotional game so when's this come out uh january 12th there's also gonna be a documentary um scheduled for 2016 i'm having a hard time reading my right already (laughs) i'm sorry what what platform is that uh pc macintosh and android Uh pc mac and android uh, a documentary is also scheduled for 2016, showing the last few years of Joel's life and also the making of the video game. So that's a really, really interesting sounding game. Wow. Uh, maybe at some point I'll get to that. But I it's got seen, a bold it's prediction. Sad. What's that? That's Polygon's game of the year, right? Do you think? There. Yeah, oh yeah. I can see that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah. My first bold prediction. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good one. It's not bold enough, Eric. No. <laughs> no, yeah, you, you know what? You're right. Anybody can see that coming. <laughs> I don't know. There are a couple other uh, Fulbright games coming out this year that I'm going to talk about. So, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, January fifteenth, Dragon's Dogma: Dark Arisen for PC. The PC port gods were answering my prayers with this one. I've been asking for a PC port for this one for a while now. Uh, developed and published by Capcom. Finally, did you buy it already? Say. No, that's I, I've got to wait until I'm going to buy it like the day it comes out. Okay. I guess. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, Oxenfree is coming out for PC and Xbox One. I heard about that, but I don't remember. Yeah. Is that the school of Ali Ali? Ali Ali Oxenfree. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Corey? It's funny because right, Ali Ali actually is, is a video game. Yeah. So that's, that's what pod- are the chances? Podcast is over. I quit. Intelligence by Corey. <laughs> January 19th, A Boy and His Blob for PC, PS4, PS Vita, and Xbox One. Uh, this is the Wii version of A Boy and His Blob, which is a reimagining of the old A Boy and His Blob video games. Looks kind of cool. Yeah. It does look neat. I'll get it on a sale at some point, probably. In a Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle, yeah. That's the best place to buy a game like sure. that. Sure. Definitely. Uh, also on January 19th, The Darkest Dungeon for... PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, and PS Vita. Uh, that was developed by Red Hook Studios. Oh, I should say PC, Mac, and Linux is coming out on the 19th. Uh, PS4 and PS Vita are quarter two releases. So no no announced uh, release date on that yet. But it has a player with managing a roster of heroes as the they explore the dungeons beneath a mansion that the player inherits. The prime mechanic in the game is a stress level for heroes, which increases with combat and exploration. So, if they see uh, one of their friends in their group like get hurt, they might develop a like a psychosis about that, and you have to you have to manage that sort of stuff as, That's awesome. as you're playing in the game. I'm yeah. probably gonna buy that game. It's gonna be a buy for me too. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get on the 19th. It's been an early access for a while now. I've uh, almost bought it a couple of times. It's been on sale a couple of times, yeah. and I'm it was I think it was like eleven dollars during the steam holiday sounds like mm. <laughs> it's just bad timing that's coming to consoles too right yes quarter yeah. quarter two for ps4 and vita oh, quarter two quarter two yep i'm gonna hold off for it um the stress cause is mostly negative but also some positive effects that the player must manage so uh it's also got a really unique art style it's very like dark and like red 
looks very very cool and it's uh it's well reviewed people seem to love it yeah that's a buy for me too eric definitely um also on the 19th gemini heroes were born for pc and ps4 we already talked about that resident evil zero hd remaster for pc ps3 ps4 xbox 360 and xbox one that needs no further explanation is there resident evil every year something it's it's a, well these are remasters i think they're just going to go through and remaster all the old okay resident evils but yes you're right there is a new resident evil every year i feel like every year we talk about something resident evil yeah, yeah. they're pumping they're milking that for all it's worth yep. yeah capcom <laughs> has anyone Cap- ever uh released a remaster of a remaster no but that's coming in, next in, gen. I was gonna say, yeah, next gen, like five or six years down the road, there'll be remasters of remasters. I nominate Capcom to You think it's gonna be Capcom? Yeah. Resident Evil? They'll be leading the charge for remasters of remasters. Thumping the drum. Also on January nineteenth, the Deadly Tower of Monsters for PC and PS4. I had never heard anything about this game. But when I read the description, it seemed interesting. It's developed by Ace Team. Uh, and published by Atlas. It's a sci-fi B-movie turned video game. So it's you're just playing as an actor in a video game. But it's supposed to be a really bad science fiction movie. <laughs> um, complete with bad special effects. Apparently in some of them you can see like... Uh, there's one where a giant gorilla hand comes out, but you can see that it's only part of the hand and like a stick controlling it from like off screen. <laughs> uh, and poor acting. But it, it seems interesting. It's an isometric Diablo-esque Type of, type of looking game. Um, really? But, yeah. I don't know how it's going to be, but it, it just looked interesting. It was different, you know? Wow. It seems to be self-aware that it's, you know, uh, a B-movie yeah. turned video game. I kind of like that concept for, uh, for a game. That's why I decided to talk a little bit more about it. It seems interesting. Uh, January 20th, Homeworld Deserts of Karak. Karak. For PC, developed by Blackbird Interactive and published by Gearbox, it is a prequel to the Homeworld games, set 100 years before. Um, obviously, Gearbox recently acquired the IP to Homeworld. Homeworld Remastered came out early, early last year, which is Homeworld 1 and 2 Remastered. I have it. I haven't played it yet. I've been meaning to play it. Um, and yeah, this is their first, first game that they made in the Homeworld thing, other than the remaster. Which is supposed to be a, supposedly a good remaster. Yeah, a lot of people really like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, January twenty first, Hy- Hyrule Warriors Legends for three DS. This is the three DS version of Hyrule Warriors. Don't need to explain it. That showed up in March, too. March. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Uh oh. A couple of the game lists that I looked at were... Uh, oh, yeah, it is in March. <laughs> a funky oh, you too. know what? I wonder if it's coming out in Japan. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. I think that's what A means. Japan only release on here. Yeah. Well, there'll be more about it in March. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that one. Also on the 21st, Yakuza, Yakuza Kiwami. That's a Japan only release for PS3 and PS4. Uh, January 22nd, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, 3DS. Uh, it's developed by Alpha Dream and published by Nintendo. It's the fifth entry in the Mario and Luigi series with crossover elements from the Paper Mario series. So, seems interesting. I probably won't buy it. Maybe maybe later. Depends how it reviews for me. Yeah. Also on January 22nd, Death by Game Show for PC, Mac, and Linux. I didn't look further into that one. January 26th, Final Fantasy Explorers for the 3DS. Uh, developed and published by Square Enix. It's an action RPG featuring job-oriented combat against Classic Final Fantasy monsters and summons. If I still had my 3DS, I would consider buying that. Yeah, I, I, I thought it looked stupid. What is it? Final Fantasy Explorers. I thought the buzz was pretty positive on it. <laughs> no, it, the buzz was negative because what it was at one of the. 
He's muted. He's got go. the other dog. <laughs> uh, it was it was one of the ones that I think they showed at what was it E three maybe? Yeah, and, it and was, people thought it was going to be something else. Yeah, yeah, because they, they said, and we have a surprise for Final Fantasy people. That's right. That it yes, was, uh, Explorer. <laughs> was it that? Yeah, because I was I I thought it, that was on the Sony show. Is it the? Kid? Or is it the same game that is also going to be on Vita? This is the one with like the childish looking models with yeah. like the big heads. That was Explorers. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Is that also coming to Vita, maybe? I don't know. That, because I, I could have sworn that was on Sony's thing and not Nintendo's thing. But maybe it was on... Well, there's, isn't there, like, World of oh, Final that's, Fantasy? Maybe that's what it is. And then there's Final Fantasy Explorers. There's a couple different ones. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm getting it confused with something over else. oversaturation going on with B-list Final Fantasy games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we're into C-list, Eric. C-list. Yeah. Uh, that one's only 3DS, Dan. Yeah. Um... What was that one you played, Corey, on mobile? Final Fantasy Dimensions or yeah, All the Bravest? All the Bravest. That's a C1, right? Yes. Well, definitely. Leave All the Bravest alone. Crystal Chronicles. Crystal B. Chronicles was decent. It's for, uh, yeah, it was a B game. It was a uh, co-op game, a good co-op game. It's a Rain Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rain Wilson. How dare you? Uh, also, I don't know what you- or 26 Lego Marvel's Avengers uh, for PC, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4, PS Vita, Wii U, and 3DS. I don't need to explain what Lego Marvel Adventures is. No. Avengers. That's pretty pretty self-explanatory. We all know the Lego games by now. Uh, also on January 26th, The Witness for PC, iOS, and PS4. The iOS version is coming out later. It's coming out for PC and PS4. That's my the, first buy of 2016. Uh, yeah, that's one I've been looking forward to for a long time. It is developed and published by Thecla Incorporated. Uh, it's Jonathan Blow's latest game, inspired by Myst, first-person puzzle game. When I first heard about it, I, di- I didn't really like the concept of it uh, until I played Talos Principle. Then I realized how good first-person puzzle-type games could be. Yeah. Um, because that was awesome. So, Boy, the dogs are determined they're just, to fuck with us. They're tonight. just going to ruin the show. Let's just let's just call it an episode. Corey had a quick oh, mute on his. He's gotcha. got a cute, quick mid- mute y- finger. Mid yell too. Yeah, <laughs> mid yell. <laughs> um, yeah, the witness. Uh, it's looking awesome. I'm yeah. very excited for it. Uh, that's also a buy for me. Yeah, me that'll too. be my second buy, I guess, of January. Cool. So, I guess it's also going to get an actual physical release like later on down the road. So, like, why did he do that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think I see Life is Strange has got has got a physical release. Yeah. Minecraft got it too. I mean, I think there's I think there's still a handful of holdouts for the digital, and there's also some people that have like really bad internet, especially in the United States. Um, you know, people that live out in the in the sticks that only have dial up or DSL. Fair enough. Um, but still, like I would just take my system over to a friend's house and download it there. Yeah. I think. If it was me. It's for the people that live days. in the sticks that also don't have friends. <laughs> that could be where that could be it, yeah. Yeah. The very it's niche possible. <laughs> um, I think what what they go for with those though is like uh like special edition type stuff, you know. Yeah. Collectors. So fair enough. Um January twenty seventh, slain with a exclamation point. Ooh. For <laughs> PC. Slain. Yeah. <laughs> it's excited about itself. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, I didn't do any research about that one either. Uh, Very self-indulgent yeah, video game. Uh, January 28th, Dragon Quest Builders. That's a Japan-only release for P- P- PS3, PS4, and PS Vita. Um, it's a supposedly a voxel Minecraft-like building game set in, in the Dragon Quest universe. Uh, I'm Scared for PC, Mac, and Linux, also on January 28th. Um, it was uh, somewhat an, an interesting-looking um, horror game. Hmm. I briefly looked into that one. I was like, I'll pass. Because also on January 28th, Rise of the Tomb Raider is coming out for PC. Mm. Boy. So that's also a buy. That's my third buy for January. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've just got the one. Damn it. I'm going to wait for Darkest Dungeon on console. That's, yeah, that's fair. Um, Damn it. It's, it's, I'm going to buy a lot of games this year (laughs) already. Already. Uh, yeah, we don't need to talk about Rise of the Tomb Raider. No. Speaks for itself speaks, at this point. Speaks for itself, absolutely. Best game that came out that day, that last year. On that day. Yeah. I don't have enough experience with it to determine that yet. I think I could safely say it's probably a 
better overall, overall game. game quality wise yeah, yeah quality wise i think that's, that's a safe assumption that's accurate yeah and i'm a fallout fanboy and i oh that. i liked fallout 4 don't get me wrong i'm a fanboy you are a fanboy to a fault <laughs> i saw somebody at it's work all, the it, other day wearing a fallout uh, vault 111 shirt i've seen people was it tim no because it wasn't think, somebody that works there oh, it was okay. a customer he was wearing a uh brotherhood of steel shirt that was like Boston something, mm-hmm. and I was just staring at him, and I didn't realize it was Tim. And he's like, "Why are you checking me <laughs> out, Will?" <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, twenty eighth, January twenty ninth, Bombshell for PC. Uh, Bombshell is developed by Interceptor Entertainment and published by Three D Realms. Uh, it's a genesis of the lawsuit Gearbox filed on Interceptor while Interceptor was making Duke Nukem Mass Destruction. <laughs> I feel like I vaguely have this in the back of my mind, um, that, that whole that whole situation. So they ended up having to change the lead to Shelley Harrison, uh, who was a supporting character in the in the Duke Nukem Mass Destruction. But it's an isometric shoot shooter, uh, shooter. Yeah, Diablo esque type of game, but a but a shooter in the the 3D isometric whatnot. So that's it for... Oh, no, January also has Final Fantasy IX, but that's to be announced, the PC version of Final Fantasy oh. IX. Is that one your favorite, Final Fantasy? That I've played? No. Did you play nine? I played a little bit of nine. Okay. Uh, I'd like to play it again. Yeah. I liked what I played. I liked the character designs for some reason. Um, they they kind of went for a return to form for that one because yeah. a lot of people complained about six and seven... Uh, and eight being I've like played more two, Final Fantasies than I realized. Too science fictiony, and that was a little more fantasy. That was kind of returning back to the more fantasy yeah. type of themes. Yeah. So I've played some of eight, nine, ten, and maybe twelve. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think my favorite one of those would probably be ten. Mm-hmm. Which one? What was the one I bought on PSN? Ten and ten too. Okay. HD. And where does nine stand? Is that liked by people? Yeah. Okay. Some that's some people's favorite. It's a minority, but some people do like nine the best. Because Dark Lie read said this is the forgotten one. Yeah, so. it is a little bit forgotten. I think it was it came out like late, late generation on the play on the original PlayStation. Oh, okay, they have some doozies late gen on PlayStation, don't they? Yeah, that Last of Us. Yeah. Oh, they know how to close it right out. How are they going to close it out with the PS4? <laughs> we'll find out sooner rather than later, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so they can charge me another five hundred bucks or something. Yeah. Uh, February. Eric, go ahead. Uh, I just want to preface this by saying I did not go into detail on any of these except for I have some that I highlighted. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to read some names off. Okay. And you're <laughs> not going to care about any of them. So, <laughs> um, Calendula on February 2nd for PC. Cobalt on the 2nd for Xbox One 360 and PC. Digimon Story. Cyber Sleuth for PS4 and PS Vita on the 2nd also. Uh, Digimon was a kind of a cool concept back in the day. I was a little interested in it, but that's about as far as that went. Right. Yeah. Pokemon um, V2. And then the first real big game for me of 2016 on February 5th, a day before my wedding and birthday. Sorry, guys, you're not going to be able to play it that day, probably. <laughs> XCOM 2. I'll call in sick. <laughs> call in, wed- wedding call in sick to the rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess you can... You'll be up at midnight when yeah, it comes out I'll anyway. Play it. No yeah, you other yeah. two nerds that won't. Wait, this is, that's coming out already? <laughs> February 5th. Oh my god, I didn't realize. Yeah, wait, your I wedding's on the 6th? Yeah. <sighs> Just kidding. You want me to see what I can do? Change the date. Because <laughs> <laughs> we are huge XCOM fans, all of us. Move it back a week. Just a week. <laughs> One week. It up, yeah, and then I also have to move back the date that I moved to Virginia. Yep, I'll just move everything. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so XCOM Two is one of the ones that I have a little extra for everyone. Uh, obviously, it's a turn-based uh, tactical strategic video game from Firaxis. Uh, the last one kind of came out of nowhere for me because I don't, oh, not necessarily call myself a fan of strategic video games. Mm. Uh, at least in this kind of setting, but I really, really like the turn-based uh, tactics involved with it, and I like the whole package. Uh, one of my favorite things was when your soldiers died. Yeah. In the like Wall of Fame mm-hmm. with the bagpipe music playing, I just thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah. Like, the research and all that kind of stuff that went into it. Um, so this one, the twist on this is that you are actually Earth has been taken over 
by the aliens. Mm-hmm. So you are on the, the offensive as opposed to the defensive. Yeah, they said um, – because you're, you're kind of like a group of freedom fighters. Yeah, because uh, XCOM is pretty much defunct mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah, so you're kind of a rag. You're a little bit of a ragtag yeah. bunch of freedom fighters, and yeah, they said it like because in the in this one you're obviously for the most part defending. There's a few missions where you had to actively go and attack, but this one is a lot more. Um, the The missions are, are are structured so that you have to be more more aggressive as yeah. opposed to more defensive. Because okay. in, in the last one, like if you didn't have to rush to save civilians, like a lot of times you would just hang back and move really slowly. But yeah. this one. I guess you do have to do a little more, more aggression. Have more aggression. So, cool. Seems awesome. Yeah, it's uh, twenty years after the events of XCOM: Enemy Unknown mm-hmm. in twenty thirty five. Nice. So I'm assuming that's a buy for us. Yeah, definitely. At this table. Yeah. Perfect. And that comes out on only PC. I forgot that that was a PC exclusive. Yeah. For now, I'm sure it'll come to consoles later. Didn't they make kind of a big deal about that though? That it's Just, only going to PC? Yeah, but one of the developers said that they're not opposed to it coming to oh, consoles like later Which on. means it's going to. Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to be able to wait, though. Yeah. Because hey, there's, no, there's no talk that. about it. I mean, right? I'm just, I'll am just i just buy it. You sure? Yeah, I don't care. I'm probably going to end up buying Fair it. Enough. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, any games that, like, that I want to have in my library, I'll just buy them. Okay. Uh, moving on to February 9th, which... As it turns out, is a bitch yeah. of a day. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of games coming. A out. lot of shitty games and a lot of good games. Uh, so we'll start right at the top here with Alkaheim's Gun for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Is this one of the good ones? <laughs> you know it. Ooh. Really dug into that one. <laughs> Arslan, the Warriors of Legend for Xbox One, PS4, and P- PS3. Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia which I believe is the last of the trilogy that they're doing in the Chronicle series. Mm-hmm. First was China, mm-hmm. then India, yep. and then Russia. Also that day you can buy the trilogy pack to get all three of those games. Get right I was, on it. I kind of actually am interested in those. I don't I'll think I'll get them. I'll get them at some point on a sale. Yeah, on a sale probably. This means the next Assassin's Creed won't be in Russia. Well, we already know. Well, that's yeah. a piece of news later. Yeah. You know? I'm assuming somebody tease, tweeted. Tease, tease. Um... So yeah, Chronicles is coming to Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Dying Light, a uh, new expansion. The following expansion is coming out that day alongside the enhanced edition of Dying Light. So I'm assuming that's just going to come with all the DLC. I'll probably end up getting that. Probably not that day, but at some, some point. point. I do want to play that again. I kept my save file. so. Um, and then Firewatch, which is one that I think we're all pretty excited about. Mm-hmm. At least I know Dan and, and Will are. Um, so anyway, Firewatch is a first-person adventure game, and that is from Campo Santo, developed by Campo Santo and published by Panic. Um, the thing about this that kind of sets it apart for me as an adventure game, because I don't know, those games are cool, but I do kind of lose interest in them. Mm-hmm. The thing that caught my eye was with this is that you have contact with one person throughout the game, and mm-hmm. it's your manager. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just thought that was kind of cool, and you can only speak to her through walkie-talkie, and I guess you have, like, choices with how you respond to her, and they can sway, like, the kind of relationship that you build with her and what happens, so that's pretty interesting to me. The initial thing that that dragged me into being interested in this game was the art style. Yeah, yeah no, um, it's got an awesome art that style. That really, uh, just sc- looking at screens of the game, I was like, oh my god, I have to play this, and then... Reading up on it, I became, like like Eric, interested in the concept of it. I, yeah. think, I think there's a lot of neat things that they could do with that. So. See, I'll just read a, a quick little snippet here. Uh, Firewatch takes place in the Wyoming wilderness in 1989. Um, players take on the role of Henry, a fire lookout who is assigned to his own tower in Shoshone National Forest. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... Through exploration of the surrounding area, Henry uncovers clues about mysterious occurrences in the vicinity that are related to the ransacking of his tower while out on a routine patrol. Henry's only form of communication is a walkie-talkie connecting him to his supervisor, Delilah. Um, Yeah, so that's that's basically it. But it looked really interesting. It kind of gives you an uneasy feeling. Yeah. um, But in a cartoony way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It doesn't look scary. It looks more mysterious. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, really looking forward to that one. Next on the list is another one I'm kind of excited for. I, the, the price point will uh, be the determining factor whether I buy this uh, on February 9th. Gravity Rush Remastered 
is coming to PS4. That was one that was only on PS Vita previously. And I actually played a little bit of it, uh, and I enjoyed what I played. I just never kind of went back to it because handheld games just don't do it for me, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, so the game is set in a floating city of Hexville. Yeah, something like that. It begins with a player character called Cat who has lost her memory. She then runs into a mysterious black cat that gives her the power to control gravity. And that's kind of how you get around the world mm-hmm. um, through gravity. And it's it's really kind of a neat game. I haven't it's, played, po- it's very popular. It is. It's uh, one of the best games on Vita. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty unanimous. And I haven't really played another game like it. Yeah. Um, maybe Bayonetta nice reminded me a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And they're actually making another Gravity Rush for PS4. Mm-hmm. So... If you haven't played that, now's your chance. Um, next, I did not look into this one anymore, Dan. If you want to jump in, I know you're excited for Mighty Number no. Nine. Mm-hmm. You have anything to say about that? It's if you played a Metroid game, that's what it is. I thought that was a Mega Man. Mega Man. I'm sorry, okay. I get I, I mix those two up. Everybody's in our ba- age now, Dan. Consistent basis. Yeah, Mega Man. It's a it's a. I guess was was done by some of the original developers yeah. of of Mega Man. So that's so. for Xbox One, 360, PS4, PS3, Wii U, 3DS, Vita, PC, Mac, and Linux. Everyone's everything. covered. Yep, everything. What about Oya? No Oya. No Oya. No Oya. Still no Oya support. <laughs> um, yeah. Next, Ner- still on February 9th, by the way, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. Has anyone played any of the first three? No, we always cover Naruto ship it in games when we do, <laughs> do we? it. Yeah, every year. Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Uh, somebody should play one of those just for shits and giggles. Yeah. How much, we, how much we, is it? I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy the new one. <laughs> Maybe hit last year's copy. I'll, I'll look into yeah, it. Yeah, get a used one or a uh, sale. Maybe. Um, Neverwinter Underdark for Xbox One, I'm assuming, is some sort of expansion for Neverwinter, which is an MMO. Yeah. Um, I really did want to play Neverwinter. Yeah. I just don't have that kind of time anymore. I don't either. MMOs, man. It's free to play. Right? Free to play right? Back in the day, though. Yeah. I played yeah. it. Did you? Yeah. What did you think of it? Do you remember? I think I liked it, but like you said, just no time for those yeah. games, you know? Yeah, you enough. really need to have time to commit to to MMORPGs, you know? Yeah. If you're not going to get balls deep in it, there's no sense in playing. Yep. Yeah. Um, next on the list, still February 9th, actually last February 9th release that I have, uh, and one that I'm really excited for is Unravel. Mm-hmm. Uh, developed by Coldwood Interactive, published by Electronic Arts, believe it or not. Uh, putting something artistic out. Yeah. Which is nice and different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a physics-based puzzle platform game So a little synopsis of the story here, and this is all new information to me, and it's from Wikipedia. During the game's introduction, an old woman is seen looking out her window before she adjusts a picture of a baby and picking up a ball of yarn. As she proceeds upstairs, a lone ball of yarn rolls out of shot. Yarny, who is the main character, an anthro... Anthropomorphic... Anthropomorphic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Creature made of red yarn. What does that mean? Uh, Something that's not human but with human characteristics. Okay. Gotcha. Made of yarn and the game's protagonist then walks into the shot, is visibly staring around in wonder of his environment. According to Salem, the yarn that makes up Yarny represents love and that the character unravels as they travel away from what they love. Mm. So that's kind of an interesting thought. Yeah. Uh, But Yarny's a cute little devil. Yeah. So... Uh, looking forward to that one. Yeah, that's gonna uh, be a buy for me. Oh, for uh, sure. it's definitely a buy for me too. The graphics look amazing. Yeah, on it, the art is fantastic. It looks uh, everything looks real, and it's it's one of those type of games that, yep. that everything looks real. It's re- really nice looking. And that's for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Um, February fifteenth, the ship remastered for PC. Is anybody familiar with the ship? Corey's got the ship, don't you? Yeah. In your Steam library. Is that any good or <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Interesting concept where you master then. Well, I don't know because it is a good idea. Uh, it's one of those games I bought in a period when I wasn't really into computer games, and I was just at Walmart. I was like, I just feel like playing a computer game, so I bought one that was relatively cheap that I thought looked cool, and I think it's actually a Valve made game. 
Huh. Or, I can look. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the concept is you're on a ship with a bunch of other passengers, and you have one person you need to kill, but you can't telegraph that you need to kill them because then they can kill you. Okay. Yeah, it's like a murder party, murder mystery party. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. And yes, you're right. Valve distributed. Yeah. Who's the developer? Outer Light. Okay. That was actually the game that first game that required me to install Steam. Oh. oh. Wow. So the original came out um, in 2006. Yep. So yeah, remaster coming at you. It sounds kind of interesting. Actually. It does. It does sound interesting. <laughs> Just play Corey's copy. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's not the remaster though. That's yeah. true. It's not, it doesn't have that sheen on it. I need it to true. hold up. <laughs> Um, moving along, February 16th, something you guys are probably interested in, Pillars of Eternity, The White March Part 2. Mm-hmm. Is that just some sort of expansion? Yeah, it's, a, yeah, the second part of the expansion. I, okay. I want to get to it, because there's, like, there's a, The Witcher, I want to play The Witcher expansions, but, like, I'm pressed for time oh, as it DLC, is. With, I would love to do all that stuff, but I don't know if I'm going to have time. Like, I'd rather play base games, I think, than DLC, but that's one that I would play, definitely, if I if I do get to D- any DLC. I'm hoping to year. go back to Fallout and The Witcher both this yeah. month before The Witness comes out. Yep. <sighs> Rocket League. <laughs> Damn it. Yep. Uh, also February 16th, Project X Zone 2 for 3DS. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess this is probably a pretty big release for some people. Uh I guess the biggest news is that it's a PS4 console exclusive, also coming to PC, Street Fighter V um, on February 16th. So, obviously, a fighting game. Yeah. Um, not much to really go over there. I not, can, not in our wheelhouse, really. No, I always, I want it to be in my wheelhouse, but it just isn't. Yeah. Same here. You know what I mean? I don't have, Same thing. I don't have the time to get really good. Uh, some of the characters that I recognize, uh, Ryu, uh, Ken, M. Bison, Dalsim, Zangief, who I always really liked, and Vega, Guile, and Balrog. Those are the ones that I recognize. I think the last Street Fighter game I played was like Street Fighter 2. My thing with console games is if it's exclusive, I feel like I almost have to buy it. Right. I don't... I, I'm going to try and hold off on this one. Yeah. I'm gonna try. Is it, it going to be 60 yeah. bucks? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll be 60 bucks. Yeah, let's split it. All right, Will and I are going to split it. God. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. It's, it's exclusive. I ha- I like- I want to like Street Fighter. I like want to like every fighting game. Same here, but I just don't. I think they're all like good in yeah, their own way. I really liked Mortal Kombat X yeah. last year. It was fucking great, and I I had every intention of buying like the the DLC characters like Jason. Yeah, I liked watching Jason play. It was awesome. I think too, like nowadays with online, I think that that gives more legs to fighting games than yeah. than. Like even early, it gives more. Xbox. I feel like it gives more legs to fighting games than it, than like Battlefront has. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, there's certainly going to be the hardcore players, but that's something that you can just like pop in, pop in. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And, and play for a little bit. Get your butt kicked. Yeah. Get, get that ass whooped, and then back out. So that's February sixteenth. Uh, February nineteenth, and I I'm going to let you guys talk more about this than than I am, um, because you know a mm-hmm. lot about it. Fire Emblem Fates comes out for 3DS, uh, and there's two different versions, Birthright and Conquest. Well, there's three different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's kind of hard to explain. So, Which the, is why I thought I'd leave it up to you. <laughs> yeah. The story is split into, there's two, like, main factions, and, the like, each each version you play as, like, primarily in one faction or That's the other. That's kind of cool. One country is conquering another country. Um, so, like, one version you play, the Conquest one, that's where you play the country that's taking over the other country. Uh, and then Fates, wh- or what's the other one called? Birthright. It's birthright. birthright, yeah, Birthright. They're that's the peaceful the, nation. That's the one where you're the peaceful nation and you try to repel um, the invasion. So, Which one are you more interested in? I'll probably get both. Well, I know, but, like, just from a player's perspective, which which interests you more to play from? Probably Conquest. Really? The Attack. Yeah, I think I'd rather so. defend. Um, only because I felt like the other game was a little more defensive. Okay. Uh, like yeah. like XCOM. Yeah. So in this one, it, it you know you're you're being more aggressive and you have to attack. So that that it, it's a different uh, different strategy, I guess, going into it. Do you know um, how much both of them are? I think they're just full price games. Like for weren't, weren't weren't wasn't I going to buy one and you were going to buy one yeah. and then we were going to switch? Yeah, we can do that. Swapsies. Yeah. But I think if you buy both of them, you get 
like a third, you get the third revelation. One. Yeah. Which we'll have to figure all that out at some point. So but. wait, can we like if one of us gets the money to buy both of them and then we would get the third one? I pfft. Yeah. So again, it's confusing. I Nintendo. think if, I think if you buy them both, you get the third. <laughs> so thing. if one of us buys both of them and then we Is would... Revelation the third one? Yes. Cuz it says here, uh Birthright and Conquests are physical releases and then Revelation is a downloadable content release on July 9th. Yeah, I think oh, wait, if no, you that, ha- was, that I think was if for you Japan. Have both of them. What the fuck? Okay, so in Revelation, the Avatar rallies both sides against a true mastermind behind the war. There you go. Okay, so that makes sense, I guess. So if I that's have, a, that's that must be DLC for later on. So I have if to, you have both of the games, maybe. So we're going to have to individually buy both of them. I think so. Nintendo, they got you by the balls, don't they? And I know the protagonist is Corrin, who's the new character in yeah. Smash, or going to be. At least um, with Best Buy, you get the, what, 20%, 20% off? 20% off, yeah. So that'll save save some money. Yeah. Nothing like dropping 80 bucks on Fire Emblem. <laughs> on 3DS Yeah, games. but you guys love those games. Oh, like, I love I wouldn't, th- wouldn't be Emblem. surprised if those are on like your Game of the Year list. For next this year? This yeah. year, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm Especially re- Dan. I'm really excited to play this. Too. Dan loves those games. Need you always get your money's worth. What was, what was the last one called? Awakening. Awakening. Thank you. I couldn't think of it. I'm sad I didn't play that. I, the mobile games just I I just can't. Yeah, yeah. I get it. If I'm sitting on my couch, I'm I'm fucking playing Rocket League. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember m- many an hour spent. My son was like, I'd have be playing with him in his room, but I'd also have it was um. Not fire. I'm bravely default. bravely default. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe maybe what about the seventy-seven hours. Maybe when default? I have a child, Dan. Yeah. Mobile gaming will be far more prevalent yeah, the, for me. The 3DS is nice too because, uh, as you know, you can just like if if your kids are getting into something, yeah. you just fold up the system and yeah. it pauses right there. Maybe the NX will Love be that. the perfect system for a parent. I'm excited to hear about. Who the knows? NX. Is the new Fire Emblem on the NX? Who the fuck knows? I would like to see a new console <laughs> Fire Emblem. Oh. I really would. Don't even get me going on that. You know what surprises me? What? That there is no one, no good one-handed controller out on the market. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You know? That's a, yeah. Even if it was a little janky at first, like, like thumb and forefinger. You know what I was thinking sticks. that I would really like? Because um, when, I, when I'm playing, like, shooters and stuff on a computer, uh, I like using the mouse for for, like, you know, targeting mm-hmm. but i prefer the movement on like a thumb thumbstick so that would be perfect for me is if, if i could have you know a thumbstick and a few buttons on a le- like a left-handed controller and then use the mouse for for targeting and shooting and and grenades or whatever i think that would be amazing yeah that would be something else. a hybrid it would almost be like the wii nun- nunchuck but with uh with like more buttons it would need more buttons on it yeah yeah, yeah. so cool but I had a similar thought, Corey. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, so that's it for uh, February 19th. February 23rd, another one I'm very excited for. Um, Far Cry Primal comes out. Uh, looking different than the, the previous Far Cry that's games. That's not March 1st? March 1st is is the, the Uplay version, the PC version. Sorry, bro. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Stupid. Far- yeah, so this one is just Xbox One and PS4 on February 23rd. Uh, set during the beginning Mesolithic period, uh, 12,000 years before present time, in the fictional land of Oros. It's an open world filled with wildlife like mammoths and saber-toothed cats. Um, survival is a daily challenge as tribes come into conflict with one another and nature. Players take on the role of a hunter named Takar, who is stranded in Oros, a valley that was once covered in ice with no weapons or resources after his hunting party is ambushed. Takar, using his newfound skill of taming animals, will eventually rise to power and lead his own tribe. So that's what that's like. And it looks really cool. It looks amazing. Uh, the taming of the beasts looks fantastic. I think it's a neat setting, too, for a Far oh, Cry game. Oh, God, absolutely. I think they kind of had to go in that. They had to go in a different direction. It's 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 beat. Yeah. What they were doing is pretty yeah. beat now. Because, I mean, I like Far Cry th- Four, but oh, like yeah. Corey asked if he needed to play it, and we, we were both, both like, no. "No," and we both really like that game. Yep, it's and you yeah. don't like it's just, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Far Cry Three, I can, I think I liked Far Cry Four better, but I could see why somebody would say Far Cry Three was the the, the better game because right. Four didn't really 
do, do too yeah, much new on top yeah. of that. So I think you're right, Dan. That this was a good idea for for them to go in this direction. Yeah, this is uh, by Ubisoft, I should say, Ubisoft Montreal specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, also on February 23rd for 3DS owners, 3DS a lot of love in February. Good because uh, it got no love last year. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last year it's getting any love, Dan. Yeah, I guess the NX is supposed to replace both of them, apparently. I hope so. That blows my mind. Yeah. What is this? I can't, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mega Man Legacy Collection. That's Mega Man something I've always wanted to try. It's supposed to be real hard, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those old, like, old, old games, right. like, you will never get, I mean, for the most part, won't get games as hard as those. No. Nowadays. Other than, you know, the Bloodborne. Super the, Meat Boy. The, yeah, Super Meat Boy is another one. Dark Souls. Corey, was Axiom Verge hard? Yes. Was it? Okay. Not super hard, but difficult. What's the other one? Ori and the Blind Forest is supposed to be super hard. Yeah, that's I why I quit that, that game. It was too year. hard for me. Was it really? Its difficulty wasn't enough. To you know, it's it's style and everything. Else going with it? Yeah, well, it's style and everything. Uh, you know, the difficulty even overcame that. As much as I liked that side of it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised. Like uh, a lot of the Facebook groups that I'm in for video games, especially the Xbox one, obviously because it was console exclusive to Xbox. People love that game, and yeah. I'm surprised that they liked it as much because of how difficult it, it was. Got a lot like, of love in the the podcast I listened to. Yeah, too. yeah. I never got around to playing it, unfortunately. But. I just played a little bit. Um, also, February 23rd, Will, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. I'm out because it's 60. Mm. Uh, that's for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. I liked the first one, but it I, I wouldn't pay 60 bucks for it either. Unless this game is get, gets rave reviews, I'm probably not going to get it. I feel like it would have to do some different stuff, too. Yeah, Same I, kind of thing with like Far Cry. Like, I I don't need to play another Plant vs. Zombies shooter. Sure, yeah. Yeah. The only thing I heard about it is there's a hub world. And other than that, I don't really know what's going on otherwise. Uh, if you're at all interested, just throwing it out there, you can try Plants vs. Zombies, the first one, through EA Access on Xbox One if you have it, for 5 bucks a month. Yeah. So, give it a whirl. It was a fun game. Maybe I'll get EA Access when the second one comes out and try it for... Oh, try yeah, it for 10, ten, hours. 10 hours. I always forget about that. I wonder if I can beat Unravel in 10 hours. You might. Maybe. That would be fucking sweet. Cool. It's, how much is it a month? It's five bucks. Oh, man. You can get yeah. it for a year for 30 bucks. Oh, my God. There's some good games in there. Yeah. I, I think EA Access is underrated. It's probably worth it. Oh, yeah. That's probably when I do it. Battlefield? We could play Battlefield. I just bought it on PC, too. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Um, February 27th. More 3DS love. Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. What? Just straight Red, Blue, and Yellow? I don't know. It says Red slash Blue slash Yellow. Huh. It was just a re- re-release, I guess. I think I've, I've, I yeah, think I heard about re-release. I think I heard about that. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so this is just the base game is yeah, down. base game. Okay. It's only on the eShop. Okay. Are I've you heard, still excited I've, or no? I've heard they don't hold up that well. They don't mm. hold up very well. Okay, no excitement there. That's why when I heard, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking remake. I was like, Ooh. it's one I would want to try before I actually bought it. Okay. If they have the demo, I might try it. But I've heard that that the old Pokemon games don't hold up very well. I'm pretty lukewarm on Pokemon anyway, personally. Yeah, to me, the new ones are the same as the old ones. So, I like the Pokemon spinoffs way more than the actual Pokemon games. Pokemon Go. Whoa, let's be a little easy on the old ones being, or the new ones being like the old ones. Pokemon Shuffle. I like. Oh, I like sorry, that. there's roller skates in the new ones. I forgot. I like Pokemon. <laughs> it looks so much different. Does it play the same? Yeah. Well, you can also make that argument for a lot of things. Yeah, but Pokemon. Game Boy. Pokemon Go. Game Boy game. Exactly. Let's innovate That's a little here. When I just said Pokemon. You're disappointed. No, so I, so I, I. Get, I get it, Will. I do get it. Um, <laughs> and then two that do not have release dates in February, but they're slated to come out in February. The Walking Dead Michonne, Telltale Games. You guys in on that? I know Dan isn't, but Will, Corey? Yeah, you guys have more. Um, have more you know, after strength. playing Life is Strange... I was just going to say that. <laughs> Won't no. you be let down? Yeah. So no, then. I'm not excited about it. I'll probably still play it, because I've been really... Or maybe I won't. I don't know. I, I think I'd rather play the Game of Thrones Telltale game and even Tales from the Borderlands before I try this Walking yeah. Dead spinoff. Sure. Life is Strange has ruined those games for me. Yeah, that's what I'm... 
That's what I'm worried it's about. It's a good feeling, though, isn't it? When you find that one, it's like, well, I guess I don't need to play any of those games again. <laughs> yep. They'll never cut, live up. Cut that genre right out. Yeah, pretty much. I don't <laughs> oh, have any interest geez. playing anything other than Life I'd be ha- I'd be happy in that spot if I was you. Yeah. And last, but most certainly not least in February, it's going to be a whole fresh game to me in February, Rocket League for Xbox One. <laughs> You can, you can show Jeff the ways oh, of the Rocket and League. And I am going to show him the ways. God damn it. All right. Moving well, on. March. Well, March 1st, apparently Far Cry Primal for the PC is coming out. Eric talked about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then also on March 1st, Heavy Rain from Quantic Dream is being re-released. I'm really excited yeah, sure. to play yeah, this. I forgot. You want to split that? Yeah, and it's, I think uh, beyond, it's not full price. It's like either 30 or 40 so. Oh my god, it's a fucking steal. I almost bought uh, Beyond Two Souls, but I was like, I'd rather get Heavy Rain. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Heavy Rain is far superior to Beyond. Uh, I'm really excited to play this. March 1st? Yes. I actually... Uh, <clears throat> there I got was a little tingle when you There was that. a talk on Destructoid about Heavy Rain. Uh, they ranked wiener shots in video <laughs> games. A good one? And apparently Heavy Rain had a good wiener shot. Oh, I don't remember that. Maybe uh, it's only if you meet certain conditions. I played how many hours that in one day? So I, I don't remember that either. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe it was only if you met certain conditions. But that, it was on there. It was in the top ten. Still one of my we- favorite wiener, games ever. Wiener shots. I never forget a good wiener shot, but I don't remember that one. Yeah. So I've always said that about Destructoid Corey. also ranked all the Amiibo uh, as butt plugs. <laughs> Charizard rank highly? Uh, I don't remember. I remember Bowser was last because he was spiky. <laughs> you know which one I would rank last? Uh, Pixel Mario. Yeah, I could see that one. I don't think that was on there. That one doesn't go in or out very easily. There was only like 55 of them, Like a I think. fish hook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like You could get caught on a corner of one of those pixels, really do some damage in there. That was funny reading. It was it was funny, too, because like at the beginning, he was really writing a lot about the different uh, amiibo and how they would be as a butt plug. And towards the end, like as he got closer to one, like it just kind of trailed off into like one sentence. It was, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to look at Who this hasn't article. wanted Pac Man in their butt at one point? I think Pac Man was number two. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> this is like a little golf ball, you know? Or was it Kirby? <laughs> I mean, same thing. Yeah. The same difference. Yeah. Sonic. Well, no, are we talking Sonic, Sonic has... ball form or Sonic standing up with his spiky Spiky yeah. hair. Okay, never mind. That's no fun. No. That one will hurt. <laughs> Depends what kind of jelly you use. Ah, we talking extra hold or. Depends it if was you a- want your prostate milked or not. <laughs> God, it was it was a uh, good hard hitting journalism. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty awesome. That, that's why I love the funny. Shark-toid. Yeah, they do that stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Anywho, the next game, uh, The Witch and the Hundred Night. Uh, this is a PS4 re-release. I wrote down a little bit about it, but I don't really care uh, about I'm it. In, I'm yeah with yeah. you. Okay. Uh, moving on to March 4th, uh, something I'm extremely excited for, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. <coughs> Twilight Princess is my favorite Zelda game, so I'm really excited to play this. Uh, I was going to play Dan's Twilight Princess. Is that 3DS? No. Wii oh, U. Wii, U. Wii U. Now, why is that your favorite? I have the fondest memories of playing it. I liked the story because it was a little darker, uh, and Wolf Link is awesome. I haven't played a lot of Zelda games. Uh, Corey, would you agree that this seemed like this had like the darkest story out of all of the? I think so. It was yeah. uh, emo Link, right? Wasn't that the the criticism? Don't, uh, don't look at me. See, the thing is, is I wasn't into like reading things online when I played through this game, so I don't know what the criticisms were. Gotcha. I, I know this isn't regarded highly by a lot of people. No, <laughs> and I really liked. It. I had a great time with it. Yeah, I think I, that a lot of the older games are kind of like that, though. Like. They have their fans, and then they have people that hate them. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. It's like Majora's Mask. Now. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's not like a cult Zelda game. Uh, I feel like this is the same one, same mm-hmm. type of game. I would be buying it, but I have the one you got me. Well, I'm going to buy it. So. Well, I was uh, good. Now I'll, get I to just, play I'll just play the, the Wii version. I'll blend it out to everybody. Perfect. So. Corey can borrow Dust my whole... Dust off my Wii U. Corey can borrow my whole <laughs> Wii U to play it. <coughs> Woohoo, I have a Wii U. He yeah. hasn't traded it yet. He oh. got rid of his 3DS. Yeah, you're just getting rid of it. You were going to get rid of it for Oculus. We'll yeah. talk about it. <laughs> we're going to talk about it later. We'll get there. Another teaser. Um, 
Moving on to March 8th, Tom Clancy's The Division. Uh, I'm surprised. It's March 8th, huh? Yeah, I'm surprised. This will get pushed back again. Think right? so? It probably has to be. Really? Why? I don't know. It's I already just, been pushed back I just back don't think it's going to come out. It's like, this is one of those games that, it's like the Money Number 9 that just keeps getting pushed back so often that no. it's just like, I don't. This is what's going to happen. It's going to come out. And it's not going to be nearly what people thought. they described it as because they can't. Did anyone watch the videos that someone put up from the closed beta? The alpha. Alpha. Somebody they didn't do up, the beta yet. Somebody put okay. up videos. Yeah, they were up for... They might still be up, I don't know, but they were up for a little while. Really? I watched them. And? Like, no, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> well, what, what, what is it about it that... I only watched for like five minutes. It was just a guy like running around and shooting stuff. When it was, I was, it was kind of boring. When I was doing yeah. research about it, they I didn't <clears throat> see very much about it other than that. Well, this is what I have: a third-person cover shooter RPG with dynamic weather and day and night cycle. Uh, that's it for like how I was playing. The only thing that I could find was the dark zones. Uh, which was that the multiplayer? Those are, yeah, stuff? those are the player versus player spots. Yeah, the game world is filled with dark zones where a lot of high-end weapons are left behind when the military retreats in the game. Uh, it is separate from the main campaign; it has its own progression system. Players discover valuable items inside a dark zone. However, these items are known as infected loot and can be taken by other players in the zone uh, and will be permanently attached to the players unless they are extracted from the zone through a helicopter. The player is accompanied by several co-op players who can turn on you, steal the loot. Uh, the Dark Zones is player versus player, competitive multiplayer, and player levels can drop if they die uh, too often. Here's so. my thing with the Division. Uh, it's going to be another one of those games that if I had people to play it with, it'd yeah, probably it'd be, be great. Uh, that said, I'll probably buy it. I won't, yeah. I won't have learned my lesson by then. But uh, yeah, maybe the, this is the one that learns me my life. The videos I watched were just from the alpha too. Like it's it's hard to judge what the final product is going to be just from an alpha. People had um, because <clears throat> you're not allowed to talk about it, obviously. But yep. people in some of the Facebook groups I follow that played it, um, just kind of give like one word answers to did you like it? And it was pretty mixed. Okay, I could see that. Uh, I'm gonna throw flip this by you guys. Want to know what your opinion on it is? This is gonna be received a little bit like Destiny. Some people are gonna yeah. really, really love it or hate yeah. it. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Uh, actually, a lot of a lot of um, some of the journals I follow said it's gonna be this year's Destiny. Destiny, basically. Okay, it's a, gonna be a third person like modern day Destiny. Yeah, I guess I could definitely see that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, infected loot. It's so already you're, like, you're looking at that legendary yeah, weapon. Yeah, and same fucking probably, thing. Probably a bad story. They said you can play it single player, so hopefully there's something. <laughs> some, well, you could play Destiny single player. That was yeah. I did at least that. the vanilla. <laughs> the vanilla single player was horrible. Yeah, take, taking cake's <laughs> great. Uh, but overall, I'm probably gonna buy it because I'm pretty interested in this game as a I whole. I thought it looked fucking amazing when we first saw it. Yeah, yeah. and they have the new engine, the snowdrop engine, it which still is... has that really cool map that you walk on. Yeah, which is cool. So it's, it's orange and like, it, it, heads up. It's orange, my favorite color. Yeah. So I feel like <laughs> no, I have it looks to get great. It. it looks fantastic. I agree. Best Buy will give me an extra ten dollar credit if I pre-order it. So yeah, I almost have to. Yeah, that's one. If it comes out and if it reviews really well, then I'll probably buy it. I can see that one getting reviews between five and ten, nine, eight and a half. Yeah, yeah. eight and a half. Six, yeah. Anywhere in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. I agree. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely interested to see when this game comes out. Um, I hope it does come out in March. I do too, because I kind of want. I want to play it. Because when I was like reading into, it, I'm like, this sounds pretty cool. It, but that's the thing about it is it sounds cool. If I actually like it, is it's probably cool not concept. going to be. <laughs> and I'm I'm going into it knowing that I'm still going to. It's it. better that way because then you won't be. That, so yeah, that's true. Maybe I'll set, down. set myself up for uh, enjoyment. Yeah, that's what I do with everything in life. Yeah. I think I'm just going to hate it. Start tempering your expectations. Exactly. Uh, moving on to March 11th is the new Hitman, developed by IO Interactive and published by Square Enix. Now, this is a pretty interesting game because there's two versions of the new Hitman. Uh, you can buy the intro pack of Hitman, which is $34.99, which includes all of the launch content, which is three sandbox areas, uh, which, which are France, Italy, and Morocco. Uh, and it has campaign missions, 800 targets uh, to be assassinated, and weekly live events. Uh, but if you pay the full $60 <laughs> game... You get all of the DLC and updates for free, but it's not really free because you bought the whole game. It's kind of weird how it is. Why does Square Enix That's like to do that so much? Ridiculous. It's weird how they have it, but this adds uh, three more areas, which is uh, Thailand, the USA, and Japan. 
So you probably more. just get like a five dollar discount if you buy the. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't. I I was reading it and I'm like that seems weird. Well, I can't say that I hate the fact that they're doing like a half well, so price yeah, thirty-five version, version of it. And say here, here's this. If you, if like, you this, like it, buy the rest. We of have it. another double it, that coming out. And I don't have experience with Hitman, so it's hard for either. me to know if the thirty-five. Uh, dollar amount is like enough content. I have a friend that loves Hitman. You should ask him. I will. Uh, and they have their like th- the way they're supporting it is pretty interesting, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, it's weird. So I don't know. I, I honestly don't know if I'm feel like I'm being ripped off or not. I don't feel like I I'm being ripped off. I guess well, I guess I'd have <laughs> to see what you do in those open... Well, is it just, okay, there's 800 people that you can kill? There's campaign missions and then there's like the, from what I remember, uh, when I watched the Square Enix press conference at E3, was that they were they had set up like a live target on the the thing, and like the first person who assassinates gets the kill. Oh, so it's, it's like an online world. It's kind of stuff like that, and then there's like the you know come up with creative ways to kill this character. There's all that stuff into it that mm. was in the other Hitman's, but like in a more open <laughs> city. And I guess the new maps are like pretty pretty big. No, thank you. It's hard to hard to get a read on this game. Yeah, because really I'm interested is. in the concept of it. The concept of it's very cool, but like you said, it's hard to tell if you're getting your money's worth, worth out of the content that's, that's there. I feel like I'm gonna wait because Hitman's a game in theory that I really like, yeah. but I don't play them. Yeah. Do you know how many times I've been so close to buying a Hitman game? Yeah. On a sale, I have them on my uh, a couple of them on my Steam. I have Absolution. So <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Absolution Absolution is the most recent one. Yeah, There's, I, I think I got two or, th- two or three others. So uh, I think I'm gonna wait for um, reviews on this to yeah. see what people are saying. And I know there. What day is that? Uh, the eleventh. I mean, that's fresh off of a couple other games too. The, so division. possibly the division. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and there was something else in there I wanted to get to. So. Um, and there was an article. Heavy rain. Oh yeah, it's a few days after heavy rain. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't factor in as much though, since I've played it. Oh, gotcha. But the witness is right there too. Or no, that's, that's January. January. The Legend of Zelda. And Far Cry. Far Cry is under Far February. Cry. That's what it was. Far Cry. Yeah, but I know that. Like, I read an article about somebody saying like the ten, ten reasons why this will be the best Hitman, uh, and having never played them, didn't mean much to me. So. Yeah. Well, we shall see. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, March fifteenth, EA Sports UFC two. Yay. Would you believe that they're making the game more realistic? No. You don't shit. say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> March 24th, Killer Instinct Season 3. Uh, the new characters announced for this are Kim Wu, Tusk, Gargos, and Rash. By the way, did you download Killer Instinct Season 1? Yeah. We should try it. Yeah, I'll be for it. We should th- throw a few haymakers. I know uh, Killer Instinct Season 2 was extremely well received. I think people <laughs> like it. Yeah. I think people enjoy those games. I actually know somebody who's a big uh, Killer Instinct fan on Xbox One. I love playing it for the, the, the SNES. Was it SNES? I got, yeah. I, I just got so confused by the business model of what they were it's doing. free to play, right? Yeah. And like I'd open the game up and it'd be like. I, th- I thought I had some characters I could play, but at the same time, I was like, maybe I can't play anything. I, I don't know. I think there's like w- maybe one or two characters there. that come with the base game, and then yeah. after that, you have to buy it. It was them. just so weird. I didn't I didn't think it was laid out very well, so yeah. I was like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, but now that we have all the yeah, season one. Yeah, but now one. it's free for season one. I don't know how many characters that involves, but. There was, I feel like it was like 10, maybe. Okay. Um, and then season two was a lot of characters. Cool. Um, so that'll be free at some point. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. 25th of March is the Hyrule Warriors Legend. Uh, we think that this is the American version, right? <laughs> yeah. U.S. release. I'll call it up. Call it up. North America. Oh, wait. Whoops. Whoa. I hate when I, when it jumps around. Yeah, yeah it kind of goes wherever. But um, Yeah, March 25th. Okay, so this is the U.S. version. Yep. Uh, North America. So this is the 3DS. North America. Uh, the 3DS port of the game has new characters. Uh, they're all, f- a lot of them are from uh, Wind Waker, like Tetra, the King of Hyrule, Toon Link, uh, but it also has Linkle and Skull Kid from Majora's Mask. Uh, and these characters can be transferred into the Wii U version, only available for the new 3DS. So this is unexclusive. Was it you, Corey, during the Thummies that talked about how upgrading, there was no games to worth really yeah, yeah. using it? Yeah, yeah. There's two right now, and I think that w- that'll be the third. 
like exclusive for the new 3ds yeah but <clears throat> i did see a video compare someone got what was it uh xenoblade chronicles for the 3ds running on the old 3ds not very well yeah it's not it looks terrible so this it's like five frames per second maybe Ugh. yeah it looked it ran really bad so the new 3ds is that much more powerful apparently wow it's hard yeah, to tell yeah but yeah apparently definitely okay. worth definitely worth 330 dollars <laughs> Hey, as I said, it was worth it for me because I upgraded from the old purple small one. As did I. So. I actually listened to your argument for that just before I got here. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Is everything no. okay, Corey? Huh? Huh? You're, he's quiet yeah, tonight. He's waiting for his turn. You're quiet and hating on no, things. I, no, I just I, know I it's going to be a long episode. So I'm oh, holding, back, holding back. Piping down. Holding back my thoughts. <laughs> Okay, uh, March 28th, we got some Oculus games, uh, Adrift and Eve Valkyrie. And there was two others, but I couldn't find any. One was like Kronos. Kronos and Edge of Nowhere. I couldn't find anything on those two games. Uh, but Eve Valkyrie is the space dogfighting game for Oculus. And then Adrift is a first place, first person game uh, where you're floating in space. Adrift uh, is one Adrift it's looks maybe amazing. one of the three games I'm most excited about. And really? I don't know if I'll be able to play it. Really? Yeah, but basically, it looks fucking awesome. But basically, you're floating in a zero gravity environment, going through like puzzle sort of things, and you're getting story bits from like audio logs, and yeah. you can find like you just collect oxygen tanks. Yeah, collect oxygen tanks and whatnot. It was done by the guy from Microsoft who uh, responded with "Deal with it." Yep, it was that guy. Oh, I've listened okay. to him on a couple podcasts. Since he then. seems like a decent guy. He does. Yeah, he just had a. Uh, a lapse in judgment. A lapse in judgment. <laughs> but well, is it a lapse in judgment? No, it's not. And I don't know what I said at the time, but I hope that I defended him. I probably didn't. No. I think we all made fun of him. I'm on his side. Yeah, he's a good Everybody guy. Everybody should chill the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Everybody should chill. Um, so you're pretty excited for a drift, Eric? Yeah, yeah, it, looks fuck yeah it looks awesome. Especially, oh, VR. Oh. That's what VR should be. Yeah. That game. Oh. I think it is. It is. Yeah, I know. But I can't fucking afford it. Mm. <laughs> Which we'll get to. <laughs> In a little bit. <laughs> In three hours or so. <laughs> uh. Okay, so March 29th, MLB 16, the show. Uh, Toronto Blue Jays third baseman Josh Donaldson is the cover athlete. That's all I got. Uh, <laughs> Are you going to get it again this year? Maybe. Maybe we'll do an episode on it again like yeah, that one year. Show. And get criticized <laughs> because get... only one of us played it. I that, person, that person might be listening. I forgot about that. Yeah. Is there a bigger racket in video games than annual sports? sports? No. no. Titles? There's not. We've. It'll never even, change. Even like, you know, we criticize the Call of Duties coming out every year, but that's like it's a full game, you know, like j a lot of these are just roster updates. Oh, Dan, uh, one or two minor changes. And that's the thing. Like you said, call of duty, at least there's some, at least some mild innovation and it's something different. But, uh, yeah. I typed in MLB 16, the show into YouTube and it says MLB 16, the show new modes, classic stadiums and more news. And it's like Ooh. Classic old stadiums. Yankee stadiums in there. Well, that's worth 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, fuck just, that. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> as big of a FIFA fan as I am, I, I'm willing to admit, like, they should just put roster updates up. Well, and the only reason, it's because you play a lot of it. That's the only reason why you buy it every year, you know? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. You have someone to play it with. and Yeah, well, I always enjoy my time with it. Yeah. Next is Knights of Azure. Cool. Uh, March 31st, Star Ocean Integrity and Faithful Faithlessness. It's quite the title. Uh, this is developed by Trias and published by Square Enix. So this is an action role-playing game coming to the PS3 and PS4, and it is the fifth ga uh, main game in the series. That's one of the ones you'd probably buy if you had a PS4, right, Dan? Yep. Yes, I had... Uh... I think it was it was either the first or the second Star Ocean, like, way back in the day on, on the original PlayStation. Was it Star Ocean, the second story? I think so. Okay. I don't know. I didn't end up playing it that much. Because this game takes place between ow. the second story until the end of time, which is the second and third game in the series. And yeah. it's set on a planet called Fake Creed, uh, 6,000 light years away from Earth. Dan, how far is that? 6,000 light years? Yeah, it's that far. It's, it's 6,000 
Well, it's 6,000 years traveling at the speed of light. Wow. Okay. So it's pretty far. So that's far away. Yeah. All right. So the speed of light, I think it's 186,000 miles per second. That blows my mind. Yeah. Space is crazy. Yep. Uh, but similar battle system to the other games, the player controls one of seven party members with the ability to switch characters whenever. Uh, and the real-time action battle system features improved game mechanics. I don't know what that means because I've never played one. Uh, and the storytelling cutscenes are intended to be interactive and dynamic uh, and seamlessly transition with the gameplay. Yeah. This game seems pretty awesome. Yeah, all I remember about it was when you would go into, like, you'd have your random account, random encounters, I think, but you, then you would go into a battle screen where yeah. you you and your party, like, moved around this, like, battle area is it and play, did your moves and stuff. Does it play a little bit how the new Final Fantasies play? Um, I don't know. I haven't played a Final Fantasy since uh, 9. Corey. Yeah. Does this sound like it plays like the newer Final Fantasy game? Which game again? Star Ocean. Oh. With... I'm watching a video of it right now. Are you? Yeah. It looks like a Japanese role-playing game. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Is it like Xenoblade Chronicles a little bit? Or Xenoblade Chronicles X? No, no. It reminds me of Tales of Zestiria. I know you guys haven't played that, but that's what I'm seeing. Okay. So it's Corey, JRPG. Yeah, Corey draws the comparison to that. Uh, I'm pretty interested in this, actually. I think I might get it. Uh, but that's all I had for March. Okay. Corey, April. April 5th is Assassin's Creed Chronicles Trilogy Pack for the Vita. Woo! Yeah! We already talked a little bit about it, uh, but it yep. will have Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, Russia, and India. Uh, also, April 5th, Dirt Rally for Xbox One and PS4. It's another <laughs> re-release. Um, oh, it is. Well, for, of a PC game. Oh. That came out just last month. I think it was a month ago today. Uh, but it actually did pretty well um, for PC as a 90 out of 100 on Metacritic. I and will buy it at some point. Yeah, if you're into rally racing, it's uh, another rally racing simulator, and apparently it's pretty good. So It doesn't have all the bullshit that especially Dirt 3 had. Dirt 3 was really bad with all that extra happy horse shit, as they call it. Yeah. <laughs> That's really, really distracting. It's uh, yeah. surprising, though. You don't expect a game like this to come out on PC first. But Why? it did. It's a racing Dirt? game. No, I'm with Corey on that. I thought it was strange, too. Dirt rally. Well, the... It's it's supposed to be more of a sim, uh, so with uh, oh it's driving wheels, set, yeah, setups, uh, okay. the you know, fair like, enough, like project, like project cars. Not so surprising now, huh, Corey? Fair enough. Uh, I, I guess it's not is not it's not as sim like as as a lot of people were led to believe initially. It's a little more arcadey than yeah the actual like rally sims. Okay. But the big release on April 5th is Quantum Break for the Xbox One. If you don't know what it is, and we've been hearing about it for a while, it's a third-person action shooter. Uh, it was actually supposed to come out in 2014, was then pushed to 2015, and then 2016 for the sake of polish. They pretty much scrapped it and yeah. restarted it. I was going to say, I forgot it was supposed to come out in 2014. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. They, they pretty much started over, at least story-wise. As far as I understand. Yep. So. Uh, if you still don't know what we're talking about, it's the one that's supposed to tie into the live action series. Uh, I did a little bit of research on that because I assumed it was going to have its own television show somewhere. But the way it works is that the live action series is actually included as part of the, the video game itself. And after you complete a segment of the video game, you watch an episode of the digital show. Uh, the video game is based around the protagonist's story, and the digital show shows the anta antagonist side of the story. So you make a choice at the... I was a little confused whether you make the choice in the game or right before the TV show starts, uh, but that influences what you see in the TV show and what you play in the video game. So it is kind of clever. Uh, you do get four 22-minute live-action TV shows. Uh, I hope they're god awful because that will be hilarious. <laughs> and, you know they're going to be. Yeah. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, the setup for the game is that there is an accident at a fictional university in the North Eater Northeast United States. Uh, it's a time travel experiment that went awry. And the main character can manipulate time by stopping it, slowing it down, speeding it up, using it as a weapon. 
Uh, the coolest thing I saw was the ability to reverse bullets. I thought that was pretty cool. But the, the names of the abilities are like Time Blast and Time Shield and Time Dodge. It's like, can you come up with something a little more creative? Uh, I don't know. But it's not only a third-person action shooter. There's also some puzzle platforming, which is another focus of the game. Um, and Remedy actually created their whole uh, whole new engine for it called the North Light engine. So hopefully it'll look pretty nice uh, yeah, if from all what else I've fails. It, does, it looks really nice. Yeah. That'll be neat. And I'm excited for that one. I was going to yeah. say, are you going to day one, Eric? Oh, yeah, I, uh, definitely. Okay. <clears throat> exclusives, man. Yeah. yeah. Capitalize. No buying all the consoles if I don't play exclusives. No. Uh, hopefully that'll that'll probably come to PC relatively soon, I would think. I imagine most of the Xbox, Xbox ones, ones are going to. Yeah, if, yeah. if Tomb Raider's any indication. What's the uh, ReCore they Recore. announced is coming to PC? That's cool, because I was interested in that. That's good. I can't really tell either way on that one. But one week after Quantum Break, we get Dark Souls 3 for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. It's an action RPG by From Software, uh, the third entrance in the Dark Souls series. Uh, fourth well, and possibly final. final. Final, yeah. Fourth what game is it? Souls game. Oh, uh, just a little indie game called Dark Souls. <laughs> Sounds stupid. You, would Might be you never heard of it. It did. I watched a few videos and read a little bit about it. It's similar in a lot of ways. A few of the changes are uh, combat and movements are sped up, more similar to Bloodborne. It's a little more fluid, the action. Um, there's more emphasis on role-playing, and the areas themselves are fewer, but they're larger and more interconnected and a little bit more seamless. Oh, um, I like that. Yeah. They remove nice. they remove the agility stat, which I don't even remember what agility did in Dark Souls. It's been too it's been too long since I played it. I don't know. Um, was that the one that charged up your dodge meter, or was that endurance? That was endurance. Yeah. I, thought. Yeah. I don't know what anything does in Dark Souls. No, that's the charm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like it that way. I don't know what this stat does, but I'm leveling it up. I, n- go. I never got too into min-maxing either. I just kind of put points into whatever I thought would help me. Same. Um, there's a feature called Ready Stance, which I guess is a way to do more critical blows. Uh, and this jumped out at me because Miyazaki, who is uh, co-directing the game again, he worked on the first Dark Souls game, um, he credited it to the Ready Stance to Guts from Berserk, which is an anime that I talked about that I really, really loved and tried to get at least Dan to watch, but uh, per usual, no dice. <laughs> we never have taken your anime suggestions. No. I probably would like them. It's just getting around to watching things Yeah. other than Game of Thrones. Yeah. just doesn't happen for me. Yeah. But no, I, I understand. Um, so, I mean, it's, uh, what I love about that anime is the brutal attacks that he does with his giant greatsword, so... If that's what they use to inspire Dark Souls 3, um, that's pretty cool. The visual design is focusing on quote-unquote withered beauty. I heard good things. It's Apparently it's a lot more vertical and, and grander. Um, I think imposing was the word that I read, the, the universe. It's like Bloodborne. I was going to say, I would argue that it looks a little more like Bloodborne's universe. Yep. Uh, and that's all. Oh, uh, support for up to six players online, which I guess they did in the Scholars of the First Sin expansion or DLC. Oh, did they? Apparently, yeah. yeah. I have that on Xbox. I never tried. I should go back. Or and no, PS4. Yeah. I should go back and play through that. Um, Dark Souls Three. That's you know one of the biggest ones I'm excited, most excited for. Oh. I should say. Absolutely. You said what day is that now? April twelfth. I'm gonna take that day off. Uh, maybe. It's a good thing you do, Eric, because there's another game coming out that day. Oh. Called Ratchet and Clank. Oh, I'm I'm actually am getting that. I couldn't tell if you were sarcastic, but I will be purchasing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I was sarcastic, but it's cool you're getting it. No, it looks I've, have you seen it? Yeah, I've never played any of the Ratchet and Clanks. No, Dude, I haven't I haven't watched it. Put it up yet. in the chat. It looks incredible. Yeah, it looks really it good. It looks like you're like watching it. It's fucking insane. I like those games that look like you're watching a movie. Oh my god, it's incredible. I couldn't believe when I saw it. I was like, this is amazing. It looks like you're watching like a Pixar movie. Yeah, exactly. That That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. It's a reimagining of the first game in the series. Not a remake, not a remaster. Uh, a reimagining. 
but it's also based on the upcoming Ratchet and Clank film. So yeah, coming out in tandem, I do believe. Yes. Um, yeah. There's not much There's more to say about that. Gets. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It it it's a reimagining of the first game, but it takes what the franchise has created and expanded on. It puts into that the first this game again. You know what? That's a nice. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nice, nice cleanser to take a break from a little Dark Souls three action too. <laughs> yeah. The opposite. When you when you have a temporary rage quit on Dark yeah. Souls, you can switch over to Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, I like that. Star Fox I, Zero for Wii U is April twenty second. Sorry, did I cut someone off? No, no, you're good. No, I was just saying. Wow, you're right to the Ratchet the way it looks. Yeah, uh, it's the upcoming new entry in the Star Fox series. Um, not a sequel or a prequel, nor is it a remake. It's its own thing. Uh, I don't know what to say about Star Fox, guys. I haven't been impressed with it. The gamepad, yeah. uh, the unique feature to the Wii U, the gamepad shows the cockpit view, which you can, kept reading the word can, use the gyroscopic controls to help you aim. Doesn't sound like you have to, which is good, because yeah. I do not find that appealing at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm glad they. I'm glad they they delayed it because the yeah. the footage I saw from after the delay looked a lot better uh, graphically. Uh, I have faith in it because it's developed by Platinum, whose games I love. So I couldn't believe the first time I saw yeah. like how old it, it looked. It lo- Yeah, it did. It did. Um, and yeah, but once once they uh, what, did they release a trailer like late last year? Maybe will. Yeah, it was later, Over. and it looked way. It looked way, way better. better. Yeah. Both, both controlling and graphically. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't look great graphically, but it looked mm-hmm. better than it did. Mm. Yeah, that, that's not going to be a buy for me. Compatible I'll, with Amiibo. Probably get it. Yeah, I'm going to get it, too. Maybe you can get Linky Poo and an, an is Air Wing. There, is there a Star Fox Amiibo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some, oh, yeah, there's I know Fal- Falco. Falco and... Not Peppy or... Uh, Are those the only two Star Fox representatives? I think game? so, because they're in Smash Brothers. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely those two amiibo. Okay. Slippy. <laughs> yeah, slippy. <laughs> slippy. April 26th, Uncharted for a Thief's End for the PS4. Uh, another action adventure shooter platformy Naughty Dog game. Allegedly the last starring Nathan Drake and the last to be developed by Naughty Dog. Probably turn the keys over to somebody afterwards. Uh, the setup for this one is. It takes place three years after Uncharted 3. Nathan Handsome Drake is retired, living a quote-unquote normal life uh, (laughs) when his brother Sam shows up and needs some help investigating an old pirate conspiracy. Ooh. Sounds good. Uh, I'll be honest. No, you know what, Corey? I'll tell you what. I wasn't all that excited for Uncharted um, until they showed off the last trailer uh i don't remember where it was but oh it was probably a playstation experience but whatever uh the last one where they introduced sam um and you know when him and nathan reconnect Mm -hmm. uh and i i was like this is actually looks pretty fucking sweet and i I like the the setup with them their relationship and stuff looked pretty cool i thought it looked cool when that was at e3 they showed like what like 10 or 15 minutes of gameplay yeah with the vehicles yeah i thought that looked cool oh yeah 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 it looks i i mean i think it'll be great i don't know i'm worried that people are going to be disappointed because this day and age like that kind of game is pretty standard i don't you know I'm, i'm worried that people that thought uncharted 2 was such a great step forward. I don't think people are going to think that about Uncharted. So you're 4. saying it's not going to be as big of a jump from Uncharted one yeah. to Uncharted two as, or it won't be as big a jump from three to four as it was from one to two. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I, well, it might be, but because Uncharted three came out, you know, so long ago, I, the jump from three to four might be big, but four compared to other games that come out nowadays is oh, not going to stand gotcha. out as much as those games. Did. I gotcha. Because of, because of the Tomb Raiders and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that was the first thing I thought of when I played Rise of the Tomb Raider. I was like, Jesus. Right. Uncharted has some competition here. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be a great game. Right. Regardless, because Naughty Dog's the shit. But, you know, we'll see what happens. And I if, just hope well-received. Right. 
It, well, I think it has to be a good farewell to Nathan Drake. Do you think they'll kill him? I almost hope so. Yeah. That'd be cool. You know what I hope happens to him? I hope he falls in, like, a cavern yeah. at the end, and you just don't know what happens. And Train. then they, and then 20 years from now, they make a game where he comes out, and he's, like, 60, and he has yeah. like arthritis, and you have to kind of... Like Indiana Jones? Is that what you're going for? <laughs> yeah. He's the new Sully, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there'll be a different color explosion at the end of it when they kill <laughs> off Nathan Drake. Well, it's interesting you say that, Dan, because this one... <laughs> Will include player controlled dialogue options. I don't huh. think it's going to be a huge part of the game, though. No. I, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, it's fine to have those, but, I mean, probably doesn't I, mean much. I feel like they toss that in there just as, like, uh, oh, look, we're trying something different. And I, I don't necessarily think that they needed to do that. Yeah, a game like that, it probably just m- maybe, like, just gives you a little customization for. I can't envision it like changing the story at all. No right? way, not in the game. No, it's a so linear it might story. Just, it might just change the the dialogue a little bit, I guess. Right? Which I don't think was was necessary. Right. I think they should just tell the story that they want to. Right. I hope it's really they, bad. They, like uh, they've come this far, you know. Say hello or say hi. <laughs> <laughs> say hello or what's up? <laughs> yeah. How much street cred do you get? Um, yeah, I just think it. I think uh, I think they'll have fun with it because they should. They earned it. Do you let's let's predictions? Do you think they kill Nathan Drake? Yeah, I'm gonna go with yeah. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say they don't kill him, but his existence is in question at the end of it. Okay, but so it's a cliffhanger whether he's dead or not. Right, because I think they want to... Uh, I haven't played I see, enough of these games to say, I but don't like I want them to... I think they they should turn him into like a mythical character. Like Commander Shepard? Yeah. I just it's want him to be, to be dead. Because, <laughs> well, it's not that I don't like him, but I just... I, if, they're, if this is the last one with Nathan Drake, just kill him. Just kill him off. And then we'll for sure know. That it's the last one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Fair we'll enough. See. Fair enough. It'll be interesting to see one way or the other. Yeah. No, I'm what excited for it. Do or this, this talk has me excited <laughs> for it, actually. I should. This is the kind of game I've been in the mood for. Yeah. After all these open world games. Yeah. Play you, Tomb Raider. Corey, you talked about that actually um, in our our Thummies episode. I can't remember what game we were talking about. It might have been Tomb Raider that we were talking about. Yep. Uh, where you know, with all these open world games that are on Metal Gear, Witcher, that take Fallout, fifty plus hours, yeah, Xenoblade, I plan like that. I have put forty five hours into right. Like and I don't even have my mech yet. Sometimes <laughs> you just need that fucking like Short twelve game, yeah. hour just linear game that keeps pushing you through the story. Agreed. Um, which is why I didn't have a problem with the order yeah. and its length. I th- I thought it was great. Like I, and that was a good time for me to have like a six hour game. Yep. Like, I Perfect. It's consumable. You yeah, should play exactly. Tomb Raider, Corey, before the, the Rise of the Tomb Raider comes out. Uh, I probably will. Yeah. I'm playing through it right now, actually. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. Maybe I will, Just, then we can have some conversations and boot it. Myself. Total War Warhammer for PC coming April 28th. It's the upcoming turn-based strategy real-time tactics game. The Wikipedia genre descriptions are great for these games. It's like 10 words. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, by Creative Assembly, it's Total War gameplay that, you know, they're famous for all the historical Total War games. Uh, but this one has a Warhammer skin on it, and it's the first in a trilogy of Total War Warhammer games. Uh, features a bunch of familiar names in the Warhammer universe. You can play as four different Warhammer factions, the Empire, the Greenskins, the Dwarfs, and the Vampire Counts. I guess this is a first for the Total War series to include yeah. fantasy elements uh-huh. um, i guess they've been strictly historical in the past for total war you mean not for total war. yes yes to- yeah i i actually really like that they're doing this um i like when companies do that like the dynasty warriors developers making hyrule warriors mm-hmm. you know you have a very specific type of game that your your development company makes and you take in someone else's property and make a game for that you know for that genre sure. like uh, 
or t- Telltale is another example of I, I like that they take IPs that people are interested in and make games fam- games for them something different than you know obviously the other the other Warhammer games are still like strategy games for the most part there's a few other Warhammer games but yeah a total war Warhammer you know yeah love them. probably like uh, th- for Warhammer fans they're probably super excited for this yeah um because. Yep. I think in general the Total War games are pretty good. I know they had a, a Lunker last year, didn't they? Uh, total, <laughs> yeah. Was it Total War Attila? Rome. Lunker. I just want to point oh, out. Oh, it was Rome, Rome Total Two. Yeah. I don't think Attila was that good either. Yeah. But yeah, by and large, they're they're pretty good games. I haven't played. To- I have a bunch of the Total War games, but I haven't played them. Played What's, ones. Why? Uh, Shogun. Shogun. Yep, that was War. a good. That was a good one. That yeah. was a great game. Daimo. But I, th- I think I have like four Total War <laughs> games in my library. It's just the time, you know. Corey, remember we bought one? The spirit it's... of Buddha go with you. We discussed buying it, and it was like, well, are we ever going to play it together? And we both were like, no. <laughs> we bought it anyway. Which one was yeah. it? I don't know. It, it wasn't was that long ago. Back, no. Oh, was I think it? it was just Total War Rome, maybe. Total War Rome. Yeah. So I have that one, I too. think it was, but it was just on sale. Like, it was super cheap. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was dirt cheap. Yeah. What was the game that you and Corey said you were going to buy and you bought it and Corey never did? Portal. Yeah, Portal. <laughs> Fucking guy. <laughs> Portal 2. I still want to do that co-op. <coughs> I, and I haven't played Portal it. 2 yet. Let's, let's do it. I'm down for I'd Portal I'd be happy to. we got to get it on PC. I have it on PC. Sam. Portal 2? Don't I? Probably. Where else would I have bought it? I don't know because I probably would have. Or maybe one of you guys do, do have it. I don't know. I have it. I have both of them. Yeah, so oh, see, we're good to go. Uh, all right. Regardless if I have it. Yeah, that'd be a fun uh, uh, let's play to do. Yeah. Yeah. We have some good let's plays in the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> it sounds good in theory. Oh, yeah, see, well, but... yeah, like anything else. That's it for April. Okay. All right. Uh, May, two games, at least... Uh, Scheduled, anyway. May 3rd, Battleborn for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Developed by Gearbox and published by 2K Games is the FPS MOBA in the vein of Overwatch. It's very similar. Uh, Set in a space fantasy setting and will have 25 characters at launch. Uh, Unlike Overwatch, it will have a campaign mode that can be played solo or with up to four players in co-op. Are you you allowed to talk about it yet? Well, this I mean I'm only going to talk about information that's uh, been shared with. It's them. out there. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I got the uh, like kind of light Borderlands feel from from the information that they've shared on it. Um, I did play the al- beta alpha alpha. I don't know. It was a closed test yeah. beta test that I did. I think it was a beta test that I did on it. Uh, so I can't say too much about what my experiences with it, but. Yeah, it's it's it's. I guess it would be like Overwatch and Borderlands crossed. Okay. So, I'm I'm interested. Yeah, I'm interested also. Um, but I think if I get one of those games, it's gonna be Overwatch. If I had to guess, this is coming oh, in same. May. May. Yeah. And Overwatch is June. June. Is it? Yeah. It didn't show up on my list. No, I you thought about covering Overwatch. It. Yeah, it didn't show up on any of the lists I looked at. Maybe it's not officially announced June. No, I don't think it is. I think it's just June was the... Okay, yeah. I looked on a few different lists, too, just in case. Yeah. Maybe that was the rumored one, and they haven't announced it yet. Uh, and then May 24th, Mirror's Edge Catalyst for PC, PS4, and Xbox One, developed by EA Dice and published by EA. I guess it's considered a reboot of the franchise and not a prequel. Yeah. Uh, because it's supposed to be... It's set... Uh, before the events of Mirror's Edge uh, and will feature Faith's origin story. It's going to be set up a little bit differently. It's going to, instead of having a linear linear storyline and levels, it's going to be a more open, free-roaming environment. I got the dying light impression from, from when stuff I've read about the game. Yeah. Uh, which, before dying light, I would have thought wouldn't have been very good, but yeah, I think dying light proved that that, that sort of thing can, can be done. Be, yeah, it can be good. So... Corey, any interest in Mirror's Edge Catalyst? No, I tried to play the first Mirror's Edge, and I... Did you get motion sick? No, I actually didn't, but I just didn't... Didn't like it? Didn't see the appeal, really. Yeah, I played uh, I played the first Mirror's Edge and, and, and really enjoyed it, so I'm definitely interested in this one. I'd rather zombies were chasing me while I was doing parkour. 
probably be a buy. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> uh, and that's it for May. What do you got in June, Eric? Uh, no official dates, right. Dan. Just some games that are slated to come out in mm-hmm. June. Uh, some big ones, actually. Well, one or two, I guess. It depends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll, I'll start with uh, We Happy Few on PC and Xbox One. I don't know anything about that game. Um, that's one I'm going to get. It's oh. some of the developers that 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 did it are ones that did a game I really liked, and I can't remember what it was. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Uh, but it's set in dystopian alternate 1960s England. Oh. Uh, and the the citizens of the are on mandated uh, drug prescriptions that keep them like sedated. Okay. Uh, and oh, like you're, flu shots. <laughs> I yeah, I guess like flu shots. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you're you're kind of fighting. Is that why I've that. been so out of it? Yeah. Did you get a flu uh, shot? Yeah, I did. That's how the government injects you with nano machines to make you more docile. Shit, I have been docile lately. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was old fat age. <laughs> flu shot. So yeah, that's that's going to be a buy for me. I'm really interested in that. Oh, it cool. looks really cool. All right, uh, One Piece: Burning Blood for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Valentino Rossi, the game. Who the fuck is that? Okay. Uh, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Gears of War Ultimate Edition comes to PC in June. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. I don't know what that means. Was there <laughs> DLC for that game? I wondered Not what that I was aware of. Too. Okay, well, that's coming. PC and Xbox One. It's a physical release. That could be. I don't know. That that's just a that guess. That could be what it is. Uh... Ark Survival Evolved is set to officially launch this year. See, now I shouldn't have put it on my games I missed last year because it wasn't yeah, it wasn't technically out. out. Right. So it is uh, slated to launch in June for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, so Ark is an action adventure survival game, uh, basically in a world of dinosaurs, and you can kill dinosaurs, tame them to make them your pets. I think you can ride on them, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Even um, the flying ones. Yeah, uh, it's got the the base building and defense, um, kind of like a, a daisy look to it uh-huh. without zombies. It's uh-huh. dinosaurs instead of that. Um, but it's that kind of game, just a survival game. I've been really excited for this game for a while. I've just been waiting to play it on console. Is it out on Xbox yet? It's on early access. Okay. Yeah. Um, which I could get a discount if I bought it now. Mm-hmm. I just don't need it. Yeah. I don't have the time for it. It's one of those games that takes a lot. I played it oh, for yeah. probably five or six hours, and I really liked what I played, but yeah. you really need, in order to get a lot out of it, you need to sink a lot of time sure. into it. Yeah. So I'm ex- excited about that one. If I buy it, I don't know. We'll see. But mm-hmm. it's exciting. I love it's that. A co- it's a cool game. It yeah. really is. I love that it's coming out already, too. Yeah. I felt like this one that was going to come out in like 2018. Yep. I think it'll be, have been a year in early access. I think it launched in early access in June this year. Or last did. year, rather. Don't yeah. worry. Uh, in 2018, Daisy will finally come out. <laughs> yeah. June 2nd, it came out, Dan. Yeah. In early access. Okay. Uh, and that's from Studio Wildcard, developed and published. Uh huh. Um, and last but certainly not least, in June, No Man's Sky for PC and PS4. Will it finally come out? I don't know, man. In June. I feel like what happened with the release date for No Man's Sky was they wanted to set a deadline for themselves, something to work towards. You know, because they seem like they're creative guys. And when you get when you get people like that, a lot of times they, you know, just go crazy. just just go crazy with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think they just wanted to set a deadline far enough ahead that they they thought that that they, that they thought they could finish the game by. I think it gets pushed back again. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I just hope that I would rather they push it back than release it broken. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I think releasing a game like that broken could really cripple it right off the bat. You know, I'm nervous about No Man's Sky, Dan. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, and this is from Hello Games, uh, small small developer. Uh, it's just a adventure survival game where you're exploring space. Uh, everything's procedurally generated. So you could see things that nobody else is ever going to see. Um, and you can name those things and discover planets and animals and species of dinosaur or whatever. Um, but there's also some gunplay, which we've seen in like... Um, space combat. Space combat, uh, some resource gathering. 
um, which you can get attacked by space police mm -hmm. <laughs> if you if gather you get, too much. Get too aggressive. Yeah, you don't want to mine too much, I guess. Um, so I don't know. It's just kind of like a exploration game. You get what you put into it. I had a sort of specific No Man's Sky question. Mm, Is it. the procedural generation uh, rely on like the surrounding anything like does uh distance from a star affect yes what that's planet... what, yeah yeah like and planet size affects like gravity and stuff like that okay it's good. a very very specific uh solid set of algorithm algorithms that they're building the game that off are, of that are based on science. yeah and i think even like uh, the amount of oxygen uh, on yep. a planet will will influence the wildlife that's on it yep that sort of stuff temperature good okay i just was worried it's it very... would just be completely random and just have no zero. It's very science heavy. That's good. That makes me happy. The look of the game is just so appealing. It's beautiful. Oh, God. yeah. Corey's playing some in the chat right now, and I just I get mesmerized every time I, I see do it. Too. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to let my expectations get out of control either. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, there's this game is made for virtual reality too. There's enough games coming out this year that I don't. You know. Even if it gets pushed back to next year, I'll, I'll like whatever. I won't be disappointed, but my excitement is at an all-time low. Yeah, for No Man's Sky, which kind of sucks. I agree, but it's, I don't know. It's still pretty far away. I bet you a month out, we'll be like, oh yeah, No Man's Sky. I, I can't I wait. So I hope so. Especially, well, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about VR later. Yeah, I don't want to get into that. So that's that's it. That's uh, slated for June release, Dan. Mm -hmm. Um, July. Corey, did you have July? Yeah, I didn't find, was, I didn't see anything, though. There was nothing specific to July. Uh, August, I knew there was a specific game, so Will, why don't you go ahead and take August. August. Well, that little specific game is on August 23rd called Deus Ex Mankind Divided, uh, developed by Eidos Montreal and published by Square Enix. Set two years after Deus Ex Human Revolution, after the Panchea incident, millions of augmented people mindlessly attacked so-called naturals, uh, and people are now more against augmentations than ever, an attitude that has been encouraged and given uh, fire by the Illuminati, causing the augmented to become persecuted globally. Uh, Mankind Divided is set in uh, 2029 in the Czech Republic capital, Prague. Adam Jensen is the protagonist working with an international coalition to stop terrorist attacks. Uh, Jensen must deal with terrorist groups demanding equality for augmented people, as well as the shattery interest behind the events of the past two years and who control uh, their own organization. I'm really excited for this oh, game. Oh, me too. Um, I've watched nothing about it because I don't want to see anything. I'm in the same boat. Um, really, I don't want to spoil anything, absolutely anything about the game for myself. That, so. that I've been doing that ever since Skyrim, and I've enjoyed games way more. Yeah. For ones that I'm really excited about. Yep. So. Yeah. And once again, one of the cool things about science fiction, this is probably uh, something we're going to have to deal with as a population at some point. Yeah, augmentations. People, people with augmented limbs and stuff. Is there going to be a war between the naturals and well, the augmented? Well, that's, that's, like I said, that's what's important about science fiction in a lot of cases. Yeah. You know, they can... Uh, science fiction authors especially will, will look into the future and see what kind of stuff we're going to be dealing with. Like yeah. George Orwell with the 1984. Yeah. That sort of that sort of thing. That's what's interesting about it. Yeah. Uh, and I assume, I don't know this for sure, but they're going to make it so you the boss fights are better yeah uh, i'm hopefully. imagining hopefully so there's that too uh i know the director's cut improved upon it a lot I've, has any of us like played the director's cut Corey, was it you that played it yeah was it good yeah they, they yeah. what they did was they added uh options within the boss battles okay and that played all right yeah i, I thought it was fine because i mean my guy was not very good at combat so yeah. if having to fight things would have really sucked, but they added uh, alternative ways to beat the bosses in the director's cut. Yeah, did, like I wasn't good at combat either, so the boss fights were a struggle. Yeah. So yeah, I played it much later, so I'm sure any any issues that I would have had were patched out. Or, yeah, I I might have the director's cut too. I'm not really sure, but yeah, that's all I've got for Deus Ex. Okay. Um. Un unscheduled releases I'll get us started uh, the first one Kingdom Come Deliverance for PC Mac and Linux uh, 
I think it's sometime in the summer. I want to say June, but I'm not 100% sure. And then it, to be announced on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, it's developed and published by Warhorse Studios. It's an RPG set in 15th century Kingdom of Bohemia. It's the low fantasy open world RPG um, that I've been looking forward to ever since I heard about the Kickstarter. I've got notes for it. Let me if my Evernote would open on my tablet. I think this is something we've talked about in the past too. We, how yeah, we we've want talked this about it. Kind of game. Yeah, definitely. I know we talked about it in last year's uh, twenty. I think it was in the twenty fifteen games preview because I think it got delayed like maybe in October hmm. until summer of this year. Uh, upcoming role-playing game set in the 15th century medieval kingdom of Bohemia with a focus on historically accurate and realistic content. The game will be a single-player experience with branching quest lines and a highly interactive world, encouraging emergent gameplay. Kingdom Come will feature period-accurate armor, armor and clothing, combat techniques, and real-world castles recreated with the assistance of architects and historians. The game will also contain period music recorded by Czech masters that were taken note for note from medieval songbooks. So a very atmospheric, realistic. Or, yeah. So you're gonna do some farming. You're gonna drink a lot. You're gonna go to one battle and die. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> there is games out there like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's gonna it's it's gonna be one of those games where the your skills level up as you use them. So, um, you know what whatever you decide to be. I I heard you could be a bard or a merchant or a fighter or they rattled off a bunch of different things you could be in the game. So I thought that was cool. A bunch of different ways to complete your objectives. So it's like Skyrim, but set in a realistic world. Kind of. I'm in. Yeah, me too. I have a feeling it's going to suck though. Do you? Do. Which game is that? Kingdom come deliverance. Mm. I think it's too ambitious for, Oh, is that the one that Jake turned us on to? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. We shall see. I'm excited for it. Uh, next, Crackdown 3, Xbox One, developed by Regent Games uh, and published by Microsoft Studios. It's a sandbox third-person shooter. It's got fully destructible environments, which I thought was cool. In uh, multiplayer, single-player has partially destructible environments. I was a big fan of the Crackdown games. Um, they are, think of cell-shaded Grand Theft Auto, but superpowers. That's what Crackdown is like. So it's um, Borderlands, Saints Row, and GTA. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a fair blend of games. Um, yeah, because you have a uh, yeah, it's like Saints Row, Saints Row Four, mm. um, Grand Theft Auto, and graphically, it's more similar to Borderlands because it was okay. cel shaded. At least the first two were cel shaded. I don't know what the third one's supposed to look like, but so this seems pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was a big fan of Crackdown One and Two. Are the, I wonder if those are backwards compatible. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. question to look. So I've never played any of these. I know I played a crap ton of the first one, and I only bought it actually because it had a demo for uh, or a beta for Halo Three before Halo Three came out. That's right. So that's how they sold a lot of copies of it. But it actually ended up being a really good game. Yeah. I don't remember Crackdown Two as much. I don't think I played it nearly as much as I played the first Crackdown, but. Cool stuff. Yeah, you play as like a paramilitary uh, person, you know, fighting the bad guys or whatever. Fighting crime. Yeah. <laughs> fighting crime. So that's crack. It's not backwards compatible. Crack. Uh, it may, maybe it will be at some point. It says the, they the, plan on having the first one. Okay, yeah. I think the first, the first one ended up being the better one mm. out of one and two, if I remember correctly. They made a big deal about um, the cloud yeah, the big reason that they could have the destructible. Yep, they they offloaded all the destruct destruction uh, engine stuff to the Microsoft Azure cloud stuff. Oh yeah, the cloud thing they made a big deal about. Yeah, which I think everyone was confused as what as of what it is. <laughs> what they were talking and about. I still am. Oh, I always will be. But <laughs> hey, if it can process destructible environments, which I think is going to be one of the next big things in gaming, is fully destructible environments. I hope so, because that's cool. Is Just Cause fully destructible? No. No? Okay. A lot of destructible environments, but not fully. Okay. Uh, and last on my unscheduled list is a game called Hellblade for PC and PS4. Developed oh, yeah. and published by Ninja Theory, who did the DMC game. Uh, it's based on a Kel Celtic myth where the lead character Senua embarks on a personal journey through the underworld. And I guess they did a lot of consulting with actual psychologists on this. Hmm. Um, and tried to accurate, at least somewhat accurately, represent uh, 
like psychological illness in in the game, which I thought was really cool. It's a dumb name for a game. Yeah, but, Hellblade. But yeah. it seems like a really neat game. This is the people that made the uh, Devil May Cry remaster, yep, DMC reboot. So yep. they made a couple other uh, really well received games too. So I got some faith in this one. They they called themselves one of the first AAA indie developers. Okay. So, or th- that Hellblade was one of the first AAA indie indie games, I guess. So is this going to be sixty or twenty? I don't know, but I, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. One. I'm in too. So, what do you got, Corey? Uh, I have three. The first one of just a few games I picked that I'm interested in this year. The first one is Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. We saw a little teaser for this before the Game Awards this year. Um, it's from the lead programmer and studio that brought you Gone Home. The preview I read for is from Polygon, of course. But it will have, uh, what's interesting about it is that it will have a JRPG style overworld map. And on that map, you will discover, quote, experiences inspired by America's historic relationship with traveling. Hmm. I think uh, I saw the, the little teaser. I thought it had a pretty cool style, aesthetic, kind of westerny, uh, travel inspired. Um, it'll be interesting to see what that studio can do. Yeah. Post Gone Home. Yeah. Which I, one of, one of the things I like about indie studios is that they can try interesting things like that, you know. Yeah, which is why it's surprising to see EA making a game like Unravel. Right. Well, I, what happened was EA heard. I think the way I the way I read it was EA heard someone was doing like an interesting game, and they went and they bought it. They bought they bought the studio. Yeah. That's the impression that I got from from stuff I read on that. So. Yeah, I'm interested to see uh, what the, what these guys can put out now. Yeah. yeah. It looks cool, but, uh, I mean, a game can't live on aesthetic alone. We just talked about Ori and the Blind Forest, um, so hopefully they can... You know, there wasn't much gameplay-wise in Gone Home, so no. it'll be interesting, oh. to, it'll be interesting to see you. if they can, if they can uh, add some sort of gameplay mechanic that uh, keeps me addicted. Speaking of, another game they're doing is Tacoma. This is one that was announced at the Game Awards in December of 2014. All we saw was the brief teaser, which had some radio dialogue chatter going uh, within the lunar transfer station called Tacoma. And that's all we really know about that game, too. Sounds cool. That yeah. actually looks really interesting. I'm, I'm interested in this one, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that. But one of the biggest games I'm excited for this year, Mass Effect Andromeda. The upcoming third-person action RPG by BioWare, of course. It takes place in the Andromeda Galaxy a long, long time after the events of the first three games, which I don't think took place... They took place in the Milky Way. Yeah. Yeah. Andromeda's galaxy is really far away, even though it's the nearest galaxy to our galaxy. So we're in a whole new galaxy. It's crazy. That is crazy. Because interstellar travel is one thing. Right. Intergalactic travel is a completely different ball game yep uh so i'm really excited to see what they do with that i mean yeah. bioware game in a universe i love oh boy you think it's all going to be new races or is it going to be could be same old? yeah you never know it's it, there's been very very little information on it Wait, yep. other than i heard it's going to be more like there's going to be more space sim type of stuff in it oh i didn't read anything that. about that i had heard that floated around now, would you guys be disappointed if it was the same races? Or no, 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 okay. No, I'm I'm open to whatever they want to want to do. Yeah, they can do no wrong. I don't know about that. Well, they could, but they have a lot of wiggle, wiggle room, in my opinion. Yeah, it, uh, of of a lot of the developers, yes. they have some wiggle room. Yeah, as as a fan of the trilogy, including the last game and the ending, I like. I, was, I uh, like the ending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they they can do whatever they want. (laughs) Uh, And this is another one, Thinking, talking about all the big open-world RPGs. Um, I hope they don't go the Inquisition route with this and make it totally open and have a bunch of inane fetch quests. Yeah. Uh, I would not be okay with that. And collections and stuff. I I really liked and, and want, now more so than ever, the guided experience that Mass Effect... 
even being an RPG had. Yeah. So uh, I hope that's the case. They are using the same engine as Inquisition. Uh, and there's a couple teasers you can watch. But beyond that, we don't really know anything. Is that the Frostbite engine? I don't think I so. I don't think so. Well, and that, I'll look at And that's all I have. I actually have to duck out for a little bit. Okay. Um, sorry, I, I may be back. I'll leave up the stream and everything. You're going to miss our Oculus talk? You're going to miss... Oh, you're the strange most important talk. Cog in you're that. the one I I'm wanted to sure. hear. I, I, I will try to make it back in a timely fashion, but I imagine I, you guys I will feel... be here pretty late. Oh. Huh? I said, let's make him feel bad. Okay. That's fine. Will, you go first. <laughs> you're going to miss Life is Strange talk. <laughs> I don't know. I might do, be back. Do what you got to do, buddy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Where is he going? Who knows? Eric, what do you, what do you got for unscheduled releases? <laughs> okay. It is Frostbite Engine, Will. Frostbite hey. 3. Well, three points for you. I just know. Uh, yeah, so I've got four games here, Dan. I will start with Mafia 3, because that's the one I'm least interested in, but uh -huh. I still am interested in it. Yeah, that's why you uh, picked it. Yeah, 2K games, uh, supposed to come out this year. Mafia 3, open world, third person action adventure video game. Um, obviously with Mafia involved. Uh, so the plot, the game takes place in the year 1968 and revolves around Lincoln Clay, uh, who is a Vietnam veteran. Um, as an orphan, he was constantly looking for family until he joined the armed forces to fight in the Vietnam War. He returns to New Orleans after the war and joins the Black Mob, and after surviving a murder attempt by the Italian mob, he attempts to start his own criminal organization to get revenge. Oh. So that's the setup for the story. Uh, I played a little bit of the first Mafia mm -hmm. on computer, oh. actually. How long ago was that? It was think? a fucking while ago. Yeah, because I bought Mafia Two recently. I played okay. Mafia Two. I haven't played it, but I, I have it. Yeah, um, I like anything that features a Mafia. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so I will probably get this one day one. Um, you guys in on that one? I'm interested. Possibly. I'll have to play the second one before I go and play the third. It depends on when it comes out and what's coming out around it. Okay. That's a huge factor, you know. I'm wary of GTA-esque games. Yeah. I think... Because eh. it's something that I just not, I'm not into, personally. I Well, this is mafia, more, it, are you... more period. Yeah. Oh, more of a period piece than yeah, Grand Theft Auto. It's, but, different. I, but I played Mafia 2, and it was pretty similar oh you didn't care, oh, you you didn't didn't care, care for it. it okay it's all right i liked the part when the snow took over the city uh -huh. i didn't play any of uh mafia 2 you'd probably like it a lot yeah i'm sure i would yeah. um my next one sea of thieves which i actually don't think is going to come out this year i don't either that's developed by rare published by microsoft uh for xbox one and pc um basically it looked like a cartoony pirate mmo yeah the impression that I got to. Where you can sail boats and uh -huh. plunder is booty. This, is this the game that looked awesome but people were making fun of? Yes. yes. And all of us were like, that game looks fucking sweet. <laughs> it does. Yeah, and I'm really excited for that game. Uh, I hope it comes out this year, but I really doubt it. Uh, cool to see Rare putting out a game, too, after Rare Replay came out. Uh, yeah, they've had year. a couple stinkers uh, in the past couple years, like the sports, Connect Sports. Oh, that was, was rare? I think so. Yeah, they had a, no, a Kinect-specific right. game that came out. Connectables? Um, I can look. Hold on. But I don't know, I don't know that they've, they haven't put out anything like that in a while. Okay. Games from Rare. Like a legitimate game. Yeah. List of but video games. Is it games. Connect Sports Rivals, maybe? Something like that? I don't know. Oh, my God. It's they definitely a lot of games. <laughs> it's definitely a Connect game. Uh, they did Connect Sports Rivals. Okay. Killer what oh, was they before? did Killer Instinct also. Oh, okay. Well, I... I hold my... So that was good. Bite my tongue. Uh, Connect Sports Rivals, Killer Instinct, Connect Sports, yeah. So Killer Instinct was the only game they've done that's been good in a few years, right? Yeah, the last one before that was Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts for the 360 in 2008. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. And I don't know how that was. I never... I think Giant Bomb said it was pretty good. Oh, was it? But they may have been sarcastic. <laughs> okay. I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as is the case sometimes. But, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm actually really excited. For, if that game was definitely slated for this year, it would be one of probably my top five most anticipated. Okay. That's how cool I thought that game looked. It looks it looks really good. Yeah, I agree. so. Um, moving right along. Cuphead. 
which is yeah. coming out for Xbox One and PC. Uh, Cuphead is the coolest looking game I've ever seen. I'm in 100% agreement with you on that one. Yeah, I, I, you've never seen anything like it. Like, is it 20s cartoony? Yeah. 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 Um, so basically, this is supposed to be a super hard game. It is mostly made up of boss fights. And the story is the player, Cuphead, you are a little cup, he loses a bet with the devil and spends the game attempting to repay his bet by beating bosses. But the real magic is the music the art and the art of this game is incredible. Yep. So, If you're not familiar with it, look it up because it looks oh. fabulous. And apparently there's co-op. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah, because it's Cuphead and his brother, isn't it? Yeah. I think his brother is the, the, other, the other Cuphead guy. I wonder what his brother's name is. Charlie. <laughs> Mughead. I don't know, but it looks awesome. Yeah. They really, really, really nailed the art style on that one. It's it's perfect. I'm actually surprised that didn't come out last year. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, it was supposed to. Yeah, and you don't really expect like an indie game like that to be delayed. Yeah. But whatever. I hope they do delay it until it's ready. Yep. That's actually one that's been delayed that I have not lost any anticipation for. Yeah. Because I have I really don't have any doubt it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Um and last but not least, The Last Guardian uh-huh. for PS4 is supposedly finally coming out this year. Nice. Uh first announced in two thousand seven. Wow. Wow. Yes. So Those. apparently it's been I argue I don't think it's been in development since then. I think they canceled it and yeah. just brought it back brought because it back. of all the hubbub. Could be. Um, I can't see it take, taking that long on a game either. That's that's too long. No. So, yeah, this is a PS4 exclusive from Sony Computer Entertainment and Japan Studio. Um, it's it's kind of set in, like, some temples, like ruins, like Mayan-looking ruins. The yeah. uh, story follows that of a boy who's trying to escape from a settling resembling the ruins of a large, expansive castle. The boy has been kidnapped under mysterious circumstances um, and comes to discover a giant feathered creature uh, who people have named Bird Dog. That's what he looks like. It's a dog. bird dog. Um, I guess the creature's name is Trico. Um, so I guess the story kind of revolves around the relationship that they build. And if you've played um, Shadow of Colossus, uh, kind of the same thing with the Similar horse. Feel, yeah. Yeah. So... I think it looks really cool. I don't think it could possibly ever live up to the hype, but people really are into Shadow of Colossus and Eco um, by the, the same uh, developers. So this game better not end sadly. Yeah, if Bird Dog dies, I'll be devastated. I'd much rather see the little kid die. Same here. Know, than Bird Dog. I think we talked about that before. Yeah, I think we did too. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, you think it'll come out? Uh, it's tough to say. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. Is that a sixty dollar game? I mean, I guess it would depend on how long it like it's it's tough because if it's it it's like it looks like a PS3 game, yeah. right? Oh yeah, um, yeah. And then uh well, when it, we saw if it's the not, last gameplay from it, it didn't look it looked like a that, like a yeah. mid generation PS3 game. I would compare it to like what I thought when I saw Star Fox. Yeah. Yeah. The first gameplay for Star Fox. I was yep. like, Well that looks old. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's been sitting on a shelf for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Which may be the case. Yeah, uh, which is but not far off. I, I guess it depend on length and and you know the interestingness of the game. I mean, I like the concept of it. And, yeah, and the puzzles seem like they're cool. But right. Yeah, sixty bucks. I don't know. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm getting that day one. Yeah. So well, like you said, it's an exclusive. You yeah. you have have to buy it. So. Yep. That's it for me, Dan. Okay. Will, did you have? Any you wanted to cover? No, I didn't realize to, uh, we were getting the oh, right. scheduled releases. We talked about that yeah. right, right when you got Did here you do yours, forgot. Dan? Yeah. D- okay, I just want to go through real quick sure. and see if there were any that we, we didn't talk about. Oh, Persona 5 is one this year for PS4 owners mm-hmm. uh, that we should probably get pretty excited about. I'm going to get that. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to play the Persona series. Yeah, very highly thought of. Yeah. Persona 4 Golden I bought for Vita. Mm-hmm. I haven't played it, but... Hopefully I will. Um, I know there was a couple other ones. Did we do Gears 4? No. No. Gears 4 is coming out this fall for Xbox One. Hopefully PC. Yeah. Halo Wars 2. It won't come out for PC this year. Halo Wars 2 I'm actually really excited about. Me too. It's supposed to come out this year. Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, yeah. Probably should have talked about that one. Do you think it's going to come out this year? If, I do. 
Really? Yeah, I do. In the fall. They've shown a lot of gameplay for it. And it looks pretty polished already. Yeah. I think it will come out this year. Uh, that'll be. I think that'll be Sony's big exclusive fall, fall for release. Fall. Um, Horizon Zero. We probably should have covered that one. <laughs> Kerbal <laughs> totally. Space Program for the Wii U. Really? Oh, I think I did hear that was coming out for the Wii U. <laughs> yeah. Final Fantasy Fifteen. we didn't talk about. Final Fantasy Fifteen. Oh, yeah. That's another I'm one. actually really fucking excited for Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah, it looks great. Um, let's see. Almost to the bottom of the list. Recore is supposed to come out for Xbox One as an exclusive. Uh, that got delayed into 2017. Is that the one? Or is no, that was bound. Scalebound. Recore got delayed to late, later this year. That's yes, right. Scalebound, Scalebound got del- delayed. In that was one of my nibble bits. That's right. Um, yeah. So there's there's actually quite a bit more than what we even covered. Yeah. We'll probably we'll do a fall games yeah. preview when the uh, at the mm-hmm. end of August, like we always do. Although New- this year we didn't do it until October. New I Zelda. Think. Wild. Wild. Remember yeah. that one? Yeah, Wild. Looks neat. Is that a PS4 exclusive? I think so. Wow, I didn't realize that. I think there's speculation about a PC release, but there was just speculation. I know they have only announced the PS4. Another one I'm excited about is um, the Tomorrow Children. That yeah. one looked really cool. Yep. I can't explain it, so if you're interested, go watch a watch video. Watch a video, yeah, it is hard to explain. It's Minecrafty, but in like a, it's a, a Russian... Yeah, Soviet, was, yeah. communist state type of thing. Yeah, and you're kind of like rebuilding under their control. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it looks pretty cool. So yeah, a lot of good games coming out this year. It looks like Absolutely. again, no, t- no time or money. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm with Corey though. I hope they don't. Only, I hope there's not a ton of seventy eight because I played a lot of fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty hour RPGs this year, and I'm hoping there's not as many of those this year. When I is, wouldn't mind a couple, but when is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven coming out? Really? Supposedly this year. I haven't heard anything about it. Jesus. Did they say they're going to support The Witcher for like three years before they put out Cyberpunk? Yeah, but the it was it was only rumored that Cyberpunk was supposed to come out this year. Okay. I don't think CD, CD Projekt Red has come out and said that it was coming out this year. But we'll Oof. see. That right. won't be until if that comes out this year. It'll be late this year. It'll be no fall. Summer. Yeah, fall winter. So all right, cool. Shall we get into nibble bits? Yeah, I suppose we should. All right. Uh, I guess I'll save mine for last in hopes that Corey's back in time. Okay. <laughs> so I have a feeling he won't be back. Yeah. Me too. Jerk. I'll what? go. Okay, go ahead. I just have one. Well, actually, I actually had two. Uh, the first bit of Rainbow Six Siege DLC has been postponed mm-hmm. until February 2nd. So I believe that's going to come with a new map, uh, which everybody will get. Um, and then two operators. Okay. That's part of that DLC. And then my second one was the Scalebound being delayed until 2017. 2017. Mm-hmm. I don't know about Scalebound. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be either. But I like Platinum. Platinum's a yeah. developer, and I, I love their games. I just find the uh, the dragons mixed with like uh, what sword? The Skrillex. Um, uh, dubstep. Dubstep techno. <laughs> I just don't get it. Like what? Yeah. Whose idea was that? Yeah. I haven't seen anything about this game. Oh, really? So I should, should probably. Look <laughs> I watched about 15 minutes of gameplay. It looked fun. Yeah. It's all about the tight controls with Platinum. Okay. That's what they. That's what they offer. I'll I'll watch some gameplay and see. Yeah. So I mean, they only showed like they showed a guy walking around a field, and then like he he called in a dragon to fight with them. And then he like jumped up on the dragon to fight with some dubstep going. I don't remember if there was dubstep. He has or headphones not. and yeah. yeah, I think there was some and like dubstep. a sword. Yeah. So is this the like the dubstep guy of Sunset Overdrive? This, yeah, yeah, kind of thrown in with like dragons, <laughs> okay. which is a weird, uh, a weird, weird combination mix. All right, well, what do you got for noble bits? Yeah, nothing. Dead. Nothing for noble bits. Um, I feel like there is something. That I saw that a news, yeah, news biddies. Maybe Corey got it. One of them was that Final Fantasy IX was was going to be coming to Steam at the end of this month. But I I tweeted that like two weeks maybe ago. like two weeks ago, and at this point, here like, I can pull we, up we, our Twitter. We talked about it already when I did my games preview. Uh, there's a new humble bundle. It's the Tom Clancy's humble bundle. Yes, Ooh, if you're interested in the in the old Tom, you Clancy can get games. access to the Division Beta yep. through that also. Yep. Um, 
We talked about oh. Rise of the Tomb Raider, Assassin's, right? Assassin's Creed. That was what I was thinking oh, of. Oh, there you go. That's worth talking about. Yeah, so the, uh, Assassin's Creed, has it's rumored. It's not for sure yet, mm-hmm. but supposedly they are not going to do a big release this year. Uh, going to hold off for 2017, and it's supposedly set in Egypt, which is cool. I wonder the time period for Egypt. Is it ancient Egypt, or is it like uh, late 18th century Egypt? I'd be interested to hear that. I think what I read, people said this is going to be like how the first one was around that time period. So during like the Crusades? Ancient Egypt. Okay. Is it like, oh, see, ancient Egypt could mean 4,000 years ago or? Nah, doesn't say. Okay. I'd, I'd be interested to see how that all plays out because the whole thing is the, the Knights Templar versus the Assassins. And the, the Knights Templar didn't become an order until uh, the, the Crusades. Yeah. So. Wait, was it Kotaku last year that leaked? Yes. They did it again. Yep. They're going to get blacklisted again by Ubisoft. Ubisoft and Bethesda do not like Kotaku. No, they don't. Um, It's not Kotaku's fault. No, I, you got to report it. I don't know. I'm kind of happy to see that they're skipping a year. I would, yeah. Oh, I agree. I'm. I'm oh totally yeah, I'm, they, I'm not in any hurry for another. It doesn't need to come out every year. No, because I want to go back and play the ones that I missed but didn't like. Rage see, quit. Yeah, to see like three, <laughs> to see if I like it a little bit more. You won't. You're right. I won't. I'm gonna the, play it for an hour and hate it. The other part of that rumor is that Watch Dogs Two is gonna take its place this fall. Mm. I liked Watch Dogs 1 yeah. fairly, you know, it was okay. Yeah. I think it was a great starting point. Yeah. So Watch Dogs 2 might be good. Yeah. There was actually an article somewhere recently that said what Watch Dogs 2 needs to have in it. Yeah. Changes. I didn't read it, but um, yeah. Has it been two years since Watch Dogs, the first one? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's around. I have time for a new one. Sure. I still want to go back and play the first one. It was all right. Yeah. You know. Um, and then I think there was one other thing in here. Oh, uh, Major League Gaming was bought by Activision Blizzard. Yeah. That'll be Blizzard. I don't really give a shit about that. No. But they were trying to compete with Twitch. They had their own video streaming and everything. Oh, really? Yep. I don't know. So that didn't fare well. Never got into the esports scene, I guess. Yeah, I watch it sparingly. I'll catch uh, like a Heroes of the Storm tournament or when I see them play the stuff, I'm like, well, I kind of want to play video games. So yeah. then I just stop watching and, and play exactly play something. So. Yeah. If I have free time, I'm, I'm playing video games, yeah. not watching somebody else play them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll get to the news, <laughs> the big news of the week. Yeah. Um, Oculus has announced a price and release date for the Rift VR headset. It will be launching on March 28th with a $600 price tag included with the headset. Uh, obviously, it comes with the headset itself, motion tracking sensor, Oculus controller, Xbox One controller, and games Valkyrie and Lucky's Tale. So there was a lot of controversy over the price. Um, even as as late as like last fall, I think, Palmer Lucky, the... I guess founder of Oculus was saying that he thought the headset was going to come in at around three hundred and fifty dollars. I read his AMA on Reddit. Yeah, and he talked about that a lot. And he's like, "I really regret giving that because it was off. Now people are mad." Yeah, he's and people were asking him for ballparks and other things. He's like, "I'm not doing that anymore." Yeah, for that reasoning. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, I really wanted to get Corey's opinion on this because he was all about Oculus. So. I don't know what his thoughts are now. Um, I kind of had, and we talked about this before the $600 price tag uh, was announced. I kind of priced my, it, it priced itself out for me even at $350. Um, I, I think I talked to Eric specifically about it, uh, saying that, it, you know, if I had $350 or $400, bucks, i am probably going to buy myself a new monitor for my computer. Uh, when I bought my computer, I bought the cheapest budget HD monitor I could find. Mm-hmm. Um, Buying a new monitor would vastly increase my uh, uh, experience playing all the games that I already have, uh, as well as all the games that are coming out this year. So, for me, like even three fifty was too much. So obviously six hundred is way too much. Um, I don't know. I'm not really that surprised that it's that much. I'm not either. I, I'm uh, not. I'm not mad either. I was. I was initially. I was kind of. Kind of put off by it, but I was like, you know what? 
Whatever. I wasn't going to get an Oculus anyway, right. so I can't say that I really gave a shit. Yeah. The, the only thing for me is that I feel like that means that gives Sony a little more room to raise their price, maybe yeah. a little higher than it may have been. Right. Uh, I saw a report today, right before I came here, that theirs is going to be between four and 500 Yep. So that probably puts me out yeah. day one. Yeah. Which sucks, because I do want it. Yeah. I would I would like to get the uh, VR eventually too. Uh, I've definitely got to wait for the price to come down. I'll also be interested, like like you said, to see what PSVR is going to charge for theirs and what HTC is going to charge for their headset. If they both come in under Oculus, oh, I think Sony is going to come in under for sure. Yeah, um, they ha- I, they have to. I feel like I, PC gamers are willing to shell out. Yeah, and more I, than that's than console gamers. That's are. definitely that I've I've read that a bunch of different places. Absolutely, because you know you're already spent a lot of money on your computer anyway. Yeah, um, people will drop two hundred dollars on a keyboard. You know, so. 600 bucks on a headset. Um, uh, you know, it would have been borderline for me. At like, If it was like 300 I probably would have been like, okay, I could probably move some money around, maybe not buy a couple of games and, and, and get one. But uh, definitely the $600 price tag put it out of range for me. But, uh, you know, it's I just think it's going to be uh, a little slower uh, growth rate. I think it's going to be here to stay. I don't think it's going to be it's a, a, niche a fad. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll just be a few years before it catches on like mainstream. Yeah, a little slower than I thought it was going to initially. So, but yeah, I'll be really interested to see what the other other VR headsets are going for. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really honestly care too much about virtual reality personally, but I'm excited to see it come out. Yeah, though, just for people to see like wh- where it goes. Yeah. I really want to try it too. Yeah. I mean, that's my ultimate thing. And you know, what? a lot of people. I to, I think I told you guys about this, but a lot of people are making headsets, VR headsets for their phones. Really? Yeah. You just get a little thing with lenses on it that you plug in. You I like. There's a there's a Android app that you can download. You connect. You connect this to your computer, plug it in, and play whatever game on in in virtual reality. I guess the head tracking's not very good. Yeah. Yet, but it also doesn't cost anything. So, well, you can get like a Google Cardboard headset, or they make like thirty or forty dollar headsets with the lenses and everything that you can strap this to your face. I wish I had talent to do something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's a it's just a guy that that wanted to make cool. make a phone thing. Um, you know, so I actually think that's that's going to be more popular as we go along. Yeah, the... is the mobile mobile VR. Because everyone already has a phone. If you can get a thirty dollars headset exactly. to plug it into, and you know, just look around. Yeah, you're you're probably right with that. That's that'll probably take off. Yeah, too. the primary difference right now is um, the actual VR headsets have better resolution screens than than a phone. Um, but I think in the next probably two or three years, you'll start seeing phones with four k four k screens. What's the resolution yeah. of Oculus? Do we know? I think it's 1980 by or 1920 by 1080 for each eye, or, or is it 1920 by 1200 for okay. each eye? Okay. So like my my phone has a 1440p okay. screen, so, it's so pretty, that would be split it, in half. So it's pretty, so you can you can kind of see pixels. Uh, okay. A little bit. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just interested to see where, where all where all this is going to go. We should all chip in. Man. Yeah. And yeah. The problem with a headset is you put it on your face. That's true. And sweat. You know, like that's <laughs> oh, not, I don't that, care about that. That's I not just, something you, you, you spread around. I'm going to be in Virginia. Yeah. So I won't even be able to use it. Whoa. <laughs> As I knee the bottom of the table. Dan breaks the table. Dan, you want to I'm split? pissed about VR. You want to split no. one, Dan? No. At some point? That's like I said. Even splitting it, 300 bucks, that would buy yeah, me a, re- that, a that would buy me a really good monitor. Yeah, you're right. That. I, I'll be able to play all the games that I buy this year on in better quality than what I have now. Plus, if I get one, it's going to be the PSVR. Yeah, that's true. Dan, when are we? When do we have to upgrade our graphics card? We don't need to. We're set on We're graphics set. card. For how, how, how long? I don't know. I'll have to check your processor. I don't the processors. Some people are failing on Uh-oh. the tests. Computer. But graphics man. card wise, we 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 meet the minimum. Okay minimum spec for for the oculus anyway i don't know if htc is going to be different i have no idea so are we above the minimum by a decent amount we're at the minimum oh god i thought my graphics card was sweet it is sweet 
that's how uh, intensive. Well, uh, here, here's the way to look at it. What, what, when you're processing video, the, like the the VR headset has to process two videos okay. at, we'll say 19, you know, standard HD, 1080p. Okay. So instead of processing one 1080p video, it's got to process two 1080p videos. Okay. It's like a, like, very basic explanation of okay that makes why sense. it takes so much computing power. So all right, that makes sense then. Yeah. Which is why the the PlayStation One has to come with its own separate thing that you attach to the PS4. Okay. Because it needs that extra graphical processing power to 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 process it. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. That's all so in depth. Yeah. yeah, I'd be interested to see a breakdown of all the what the components cost mm-hmm. because I thought that was I, that seemed a bit much, but. Again, this reminds. I have no. I'm not an engineer, so I have no idea. This reminds me. Uh, they asked him what the lifespan uh, for the first generation Oculus would be. That's Power another. Rocky. That's another thing. He said it would be like a phone lifespan. So like a year three, and a half or two years. He said two to three. Mm. So that's the problem with technology nowadays. Is it's growing so by leaps fast. and bounds. Yeah. So if you want to drop six hundred every two to three years at all, and like if the he said the CPU and GPU are places where they want to improve on because then that'll cut back costs for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so he said that's one thing that they want to work on for their second generation. I don't see so the second gen costing six hundred bucks still. If there's other competitors, mm-hmm. there's no way. Yeah. No, I think you're right, Dan. So it's all very interesting to see how this all shakes out. Again, I think even if the HTC the the Vive comes in at like five hundred bucks, I think Oculus might even like cut the price at that point yeah because they have facebook backing them i know they're not so they're supposedly not making a profit off of the first gen the first generation vr headsets but facebook can certainly eat uh yeah they can eat eat some of the costs because i think it's going to be big yeah. you know down the line now when's this coming out specifically what day march 28th is it march 28th okay mm-hmm. soon yeah yeah, because Facebook wants to get into like education with those things, which I think there's a lot of cool applications there for education and mm-hmm. um, a lot of different things you can use it for training. Yeah. Not uh, that that and that was my concern with Oculus when Facebook bought it was that they would try to use it for education for VR training for other things, you know? and not and not well not not that, but, <laughs> it, but but not have it be a gaming peripheral anymore. Yeah, have it be just. For everything yeah and every man's device yeah so any other thoughts on oculus like i said i really wanted to get Corey's opinion yeah because he was all in for oculus i'm I, i'm I think, sure i bet you he's all out yeah, yeah I, I would think so that's a tough pill to swallow sounded like he was all out yeah <laughs> he'd have to upgrade his computer too wouldn't he he would have to get a new video card i don't think he was a pro- he was planning on doing that anyway yeah. uh. so like uh, but again uh you're looking at Oh, and another thing I wanted to talk about, uh, like on the comments, I was reading the comments sections, and they're like, in Canada, this headset's eight hundred Canadian plus tax plus shipping. It's over a thousand bucks for for Canadians. In the United States, it was six hundred plus tax. A he, lot of other places, it was way more. He talked about that too, and how he was really like not upset, but he said it was really unfortunate that yeah. all of the currency issues. Yeah. So, it's a. That's tough. Apparently they sold out of day ones yeah. in 14 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Which a lot of people said it was a lot of it was scalpers. Yeah, you, I could see you that. You didn't need to put any money down to pre-order it. Like I could have pre-ordered one even though I had no intention right. of buying it. Oh, wow. It, it Like Amazon, it won't it won't charge you until it sh- ships. So okay. I could cancel it any time before that. So I can imagine some of those dates will move up a little bit uh, as people get near and figure out that they're just not going to have enough money for it. Yeah. Or whatever, but yeah, in Corey's situation, like he at least has to buy a three hundred dollar graphics card on top of the six hundred dollar. <laughs> um, I, actually, I think the AMD card is a little bit cheaper, but I I thought I had heard he wanted to go the Nvidia route this time. Mm-hmm. But so, okay, yeah, that's VR. That was the big news this week, the big controversy. Indeed. And damn it, Corey. Well, if he gets gets back by the time we're done, we'll have him give his thoughts on it, and we can. Reopen the discussion, I guess. All righty. How was your Corey, week, Eric? Corey. A uh, couple of weeks, I guess. Yeah. So we're talking about before Christmas. Yeah, I guess it has been. I don't know. I mean, I don't even remember. That's how I was. I got too. a new TV. Have I talked about that? 
No, not no. on here. Yeah, so my my fiance got me a 58 inch 4K Vizio as a wedding present, but she she decided to give it to me at Christmas, which was great, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I fucking love it. Uh, There's nothing I, like a new TV. Yeah, so I had to go out and get a new um, TV stand, entertainment center, whatever, too. So I got a pretty nice setup now. Mm-hmm. Um, quite a difference over my 10 plus year old 37 inch yeah. that I was using. <laughs> Uh, so the, that was the, really nice. The color quality and sharpness of the images is he, the huge oh, yeah. difference. Yeah. Huge difference. And I, I can sit back on my couch when I play games now. Yeah. Which is great. Um, geez, I don't know what else has been going on. The Bills knocked the Jets out of the playoffs. I so loved, that was great. I love seeing that. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Fitzpatrick with a return to form. Three <laughs> interceptions on the last three drives. Oh, wow. I was playing Battlefront with Eric when Eric was watching the game at the same time, so I got to hear it. Eric nice. goes, through another one! <laughs> he was throwing them left and right. You just thought he was back playing for the Bills. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm really glad just because the Jets lost, but I also would much rather see the Steelers in the playoffs. Oh, me too. Than, than the Absolutely, Jets. I hate yeah. the Jets. Um, I don't think there's anything else, really. I, I did get a date, I think, that I'll be down in Virginia by March 1st. Wow. Um... So, yeah, I'm going to look at apartments the 18th through the 20th. Mm. I got a par- uh, appointments set up for six ap- apartments, two each day. I wanted to space it out so we yeah. had time to look around and do yeah. other stuff, too. So, got a diner down there I'm going to try out. Nice. Um, so, then the podcast will go o- over to full Skype. At yeah. That point. Yeah, full Skype. I'm hoping my internet doesn't suck. Yeah. It's Time Warner, right? Comcast. Oh, the only thing, I, I think their internet's fine. You have to worry about data caps. <laughs> I think. God damn it. What's Infinity? I think that's just a different ISP. One of the places I called... Some some places have more than one. Not like here where we only have one. One of the places I called has Infinity high-speed internet included mm. in rent. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. You just check out the speeds and if there's da- yeah. uh, data caps. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I don't know. We shall see. Uh, got a bu- busy time coming up here with wedding and all that shit. Yeah. So, oh, Comcast Infinity is a thing. Oh, gotcha. So Infinity is just what they call their internet. Yeah. Gotcha. Is it lousy, Valerie? Give me the harsh realities. <laughs> Break his heart. I'm pretty sure it's only like it's, I mean, it's no worse than Time Warner. But it has the data caps. Tito said infinity means no data cap. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, All right. That's it, I think. Will, what do you got? Oh, I like Eric. I can't really remember. Uh, Anything over like three days. I mean, hockey stuff, Dan, but... Go ahead. You can talk about it. Because uh, I'll forget by the time it's my turn. Yeah, so there was a big trade in the NHL yesterday. Uh, Nashville traded Seth Jones to Columbus for Ryan Johansson, mm-hmm. which is huge because both teams got what they needed. Uh, Columbus really needed a defenseman, mm-hmm. uh, and Nashville really needed a number one center. So Yes, they did. Uh, boy, did they get one. That's what they've needed for a very long time. I was listening to the American Wyshynski podcast today, and they were talking about how... Um, uh, Dave Poyle sounded like Captain Ahab uh, during his press conference because he finally got his big big catch. Oh, I bet, yeah. He's the number one signer yeah. that he's been trying to get for, they said like 12 years he's been trying to get one because yeah. uh, Spezza said no. Yeah. And they were just going over a list of all the people that like didn't want to come to Nashville or Washington before that, mm-hmm. and they finally finally got him, yeah. Ryan Johansson. So uh, I told Dan if he wasn't if he doesn't play lazy, he's going to be a... yeah amazing player yeah i mean like i said that's what they've needed um seth jones was not getting a lot of playing time he was on our third defensive pairing really yeah because of you know we've got weber and yossi for our first pairing uh ekholm and ellis for the second pairing who uh ekholm's really underrated ellis is i think you know he's he's a good defenseman but together they play play really well well and cohesively so seth jones was not getting a lot of playing time a little bit of Time on the power play, not not too much. Yeah, I mean, like anyone they have can play on the power play. And Nashville has the really. best defensive core in the entire NHL. Yeah, by far, it's up. It's definitely up there. Um, um, so yeah, he was on. He was on the third defensive pairing, not getting a ton of ice time. So might as well yeah. trade for somebody that they. Those other guys are signed for. I think even Yossi signed for another like five years. Mm-hmm. Ellis is like four years. Ekholm is four years. I think they yeah. just resigned him. So and Jackman's 
come out. <laughs> He's just a fill-in. Did you guys see that? No, Corey, Corey flashes yeah, his navel. Yeah. <laughs> What a big queen he is. Uh, yeah, and Columbus is uh, pretty much folding so they can get Austin Matthews. Oh, um, Sabres are going to be in the mix again, too, it looks like. Well, I was reading the Reddit post, and they I said... I thought they were playing better. They're 29th. Yeah, they're not really. Doing, the Maple Leafs are playing like really good, so the Sabres have fallen below them. I thought they were doing pretty well They are. They're competing. Oh, okay. Yeah, every, they're at least better to watch. Right. And every game's close. Uh, well, except for the 5-1 ass kicking that Florida <laughs> handed them. <laughs> Florida's good, though. Yeah, Florida's yeah. on a tear. But I was reading, because people were like, well, we're going to go all in for Austin Matthews. And somebody said, Buffalo will finally get its revenge and <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> take the number one pick. No, I'm sure Edmonton will get it again. Oh, uh, my God. Don't even get me going on that. Who's, uh, they're not close to last, are no, they? No, they're in last. In div- eh, maybe. Let me look. They're not. Their division's so close, though, that they can honestly make the playoffs and like by winning three games. Yeah, the Pacific's not very, not doing very well. Uh, let's see, Dan. Nashville, Other than Los Angeles, Edmonton's in last with thirty-seven points. Uh, San Jose's above them with thirty-eight. Anaheim has thirty-nine. Calgary has forty. Vancouver has forty-one. Arizona has forty-two. Wow. Arizona's in first. Second. No, LA. LA's got first. fifty-two. Oh, okay. They're the only good team in the division. <laughs> wow. Wasn't Arizona supposed to suck? Yeah. Yeah. They they did a little. Bit. They've been doing pretty well because of uh, Duclair and Domi. And Domi. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Because Austin Matthews is from Glendale, Arizona. Yeah. So they the thing is they want him to go there. Oh. Um. But Arizona won't. That doesn't look like they it's need, gonna happen. They need to send Duclair and Domi to the AHL. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing is John Scott is an all-star, <laughs> which is hilarious. I don't like that. <laughs> um, they, uh, basically two podcasts I listened to said it at the same time without knowing that they were wanted John Scott to be an all-star and Reddit heard it, uh, and Reddit made it happen. Nice. So John Scott. <laughs> Scott's an all-star. Uh, why, do you, why John Scott specifically? They picked him because... He's the guy who wore a shirt of him scoring an, a goal in the NHL. Uh, it was his only goal of the year, and it was him celebrating, and he was wearing that shirt okay. uh, at practice. So he's like a good sport guy. Like okay. he's, a, he's a good sport and yeah. like funny and entertaining on top of him being not good. A, and a giant. And a giant. So they wanted to see what he could do. Um, and okay. they said uh, expectations are so low that if he scores a goal, like people are going to go... Should- Crazy. They should let him score. Well, he's going to be with Goudreau, uh, and I forgot who the other player projected to play on the three on three. Mm-hmm. So they said Goudreau is just going to try and feed him the puck. I like that. It's funny. So it's going to be interesting. I want to see what John Scott does for skills competition. I just don't understand. <laughs> no words. Eric's out of words. It right. just makes a mockery of the game, in my opinion. I think it's stupid. Um. But other than that, I don't think I have. Anything. I think all star games are stupid. Period. That's what. Um, it shouldn't even be played. That's what they talked about on the Merrick Wyshynski. That's kind of a joke anyway. So yeah. they should just vote, and you get a trophy. Yeah, good for you. I don't mind the skills competition because you that, know that, that's fun. Like well, and that that and um, like because a lot of times the players they don't want to get hurt during an all star game. Yeah, so the they skills don't, competitions are. Right. They don't. They don't. They don't play that hard. And plus, you get, you get the moments where Voracek uh, grabbed Goudreau and acted like he was a little kid. I don't know if you saw the video. No. Would Ryan Johansson did like grab the kid out of the stands or whatever uh, and let him take the shot and mm-hmm. like he controlled the stick of the little kid because he was like a toddler. Mm-hmm. So then they grabbed Johnny Goudreau, who for people who don't know is like under five ten or yeah, whatever. He's a small dude. And then Voracek like hunched over and pretended like Voracek was the or Goudreau was the little kid. And like controlled his stick and took the shot. It's really funny on YouTube, but um, so yeah, there's stuff like that that'll happen that make it entertaining, too. So, mm-hmm. very nice. Anything else? Not really. Okay. Uh, I got a couple quick things. I finally convinced the wife to watch Game of Thrones with me. Um, and starting, we started Christmas night, and I let her control how many episodes we watch, how how quickly we watch them. So pretty much every night since we started watching, we've at least watched probably two episodes. I think even after the Thummies, we watched two episodes, even though I got upstairs at about one. Jesus. I think we went to bed at like 3.30 that night. Holy crap. But yeah, I think two is the fewest. So we are we have two episodes to go. Until you're all caught up. Until we're all caught up. Wow. Um, so in, I guess, uh, two weeks, 
we watched fifth, uh, 48 Game of Thrones Holy episodes at shit. one hour each. It's impressive. Yeah. So she really likes it. She says she hates it, but she really likes it. Yeah. She hates it because of, you know, uh, one of the things I find interesting about the show is because it's not afraid to kill off its characters. Yeah. When you're watching like a battle or something weird going on, you have no idea what's going to happen because anyone could die at any point. Mm hmm. Show's not afraid to kill off its people. Which I like. Which I love. Yeah. Um, How's Tyrion so, doing? Tyrion? <laughs> oh. Tyrion? Tyrion, yeah. Tyrion, Tyrion, Tyrion. Tyrion. Tyrion Lannister. I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything. Can you tell me off air? No, just watch it. Uh, Do I have can, to look it up, Dan? You, you can. <laughs> you should just watch it. I know. It's good. I can't. Oh, God. Hour long? I can't do that. It's an hour long. Yeah, we watched... Some episodes we even got like five episodes in. We'd start at like ten. Wow. Jesus. Or no, it, it's if we got the kids to go to bed when when they're supposed to go to bed, which is about nine, we would watch five episodes wow. from nine to two. So she loves it. Yeah. So which is good because I I thought she would. Um, she was a little put off at first by the violence, but I think she's kind of gotten used to it. Um, and I I tell her all the time it's it's fake. You know, it's, it's not, not real. Yeah. They're all living in real life. Yeah, if it was real, I, I wouldn't want to watch it, but it's yeah. fake. So. so there was that. And the only other, other thing that I have that I can think of, I'm sure there's other stuff that I'm missing, but uh, I got a new case for my computer. Finally, I've been wanting to do that for a few years now. Uh, I got some Amazon gift cards for Christmas, so I ordered a case, nice. a couple fans to put in it. Uh, boy, is my computer running much cooler now. Yeah. Um, I actually had to underclock my graphics card a little bit because my case had such bad airflow um, that it was getting a little too warm in there. Yeah. And I certainly didn't want to damage any of my components. So, yeah. uh, new case, new fans. Uh, it's running nice and cool. So, nice. Yeah. That's all I got. Should we get right into what we played? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Eric. we should. Eric, go ahead. We'll let you get started. Um, well, I know this is going to come as a surprise to you guys, but um, I finally beat Rocket League as what we would consider oh. <laughs> a beaten game. Played the single player season? I did. Uh, well done. Because I decided I was going to platinum it. It's the first platinum oh. trophy I've ever gotten on PlayStation. Oh, you platinum nice. it? Yeah, I did. That's well done. Yeah. Impressive. I was sitting there the other day, and I was like, you know what? I looked at the trophies I had left. I was like, I can just do this. It took yeah. me like an extra hour and a half. Um... So yeah, I uh, did that. I played... I did want to talk a little more about Three-Fourths Home, which I actually played last week, mm -hmm. um, but we did our thummies, so I didn't talk about it. Uh, Three-Fourths Home, it took me probably an hour to get through, maybe even less than that. It's like you're driving and you're talking on a phone to your family at the same time. And you pick dialogue choices. And I believe what you pick to, like affects the outcome. I'm not exactly sure if that's true or not. You shouldn't be talking on the phone while driving. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know. That was the first do you, mistake. Do you die? I'm not going to say what happens. Oh, my God, you do. Partly because you're not sure, right? Well, wasn't there a little confusion as to what? I'm kind of sure what happens. Did you in this? The, yeah, it <laughs> took me like 45 minutes. Well done. I... I'm kind of sure what happens in the main story, but then there's the epilogue where I think you can change outcomes. I'm not sure. Wow. So I, ha I have it, Will. You can play it on Xbox it, if it you want. It downloaded for me. I was like, what yeah, is this? It takes like an hour. You just knock it out. That kind of game. Yeah. It was interesting. I don't know if I'd recommend it. I would recommend you watching somebody play it, probably. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of know what happened in the main part. The epilogue is what fucked me up. Okay. So, there's that. Um, I played some more Star Wars Battlefront. My opinion hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, so then I tried... I, I finished the first episode of Life is Strange after our Thummies discussion. Um, that was really good. The first episode was really good. Glad you uh, liked it. The ending was great. I really like how it set everything up. Um, some really good characters in there. I did not expect that my fiance would be mad at me for playing it without her. I was hoping you'd bring that up. Yeah, she doesn't like video games. For those of you that are new to the to the podcast, um, but she agreed to play Life is Strange with me for a little while. So we played probably, I don't know, probably an hour's worth of the first episode together. 
Um, and I, I let her make most of the choices. Um, and I didn't get the sense that she really liked it all that much. So I just played through the first episode by myself because I wanted to just play through it. Yeah. And uh, I told her and she got like pissed off about it. So, really? Yeah. So I guess uh, I'm assuming I can go back. Yeah, you can. And pick up from wherever. Yeah. Yeah. So I know where we left off. So I'll probably not beat that as soon as I had hoped. Okay. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. Just tell. It's still a good experience to yeah. sit with the. I know, but I'm going to be moving. Oh, that's right. So you got to try to fit. You're not going to be able to fit it in no. before. Yeah. Because really you got a wedding coming up. That we're we, we're going to be moving. out of town for a week. Yeah. Just beat it when you're uh, down there, and then when she comes with you, just pick have it up. Make all the, yeah. may, may have her make all decisions. You, you can just if if like if you finish episode one here, you can just pick up from two and then go. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but I really liked episode one. It's pretty pretty good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, looking forward to seeing what happens in that mm-hmm. game. So one character in particular, I want to see what he's got going on. Nice. Step <sighs> the stepdad, David. He's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> Creep creeper. Uh-huh. David. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing I played was Soma. Um, oh. I bought that. I don't know last week or the week before that on the Sony sale for the holidays on off of Corey's recommendation. Now I asked Corey how scary it was on a scale of one to ten, and he said it was like a six. He said it wasn't that scary. Lo and behold. I stopped playing it after about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. Because, and it's my own fault. What I do, I do this every fucking time. I shut all the lights off and I put my headphones on. And I just have like a couple candles lit and mm-hmm. I start freaking myself out. So I got to stop. I got to stop playing it with the headphones on and the lights off. Right. And just play it like, because I guess just getting too freaked out. Like there was one little jump scare. And then, like, everything went dark, and I could barely see, oh, and I, it was one of those things where I had to get, f- search for something to unlock something else. Yeah. And then had to travel back in the dark after knowing, like, something was around me, and I didn't exactly know how to get back where I was going, but I also didn't want to, like, look through every fucking room because I was afraid something was going to jump at me. Uh-huh. So I was just like, fuck this, and shut <laughs> it off. <laughs> okay. That being said, I really liked what I played. Right. Like, game-wise, I thought it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm sure it's really good. And maybe I'll go back to it. With the, with the lights on. And the, yeah. I'm just such a pussy. It's unbelievable. I was going to play it, it's, but... It's understandable. I heard it was scary. That's why I haven't started it yet. Maybe it won't be for you. I don't know. It's... it's uh, I don't know. Like, Corey said, it's like a psychological thriller. Yeah. And I see that, but... There's also, like, that aspect of... You've seen Alien Isolation played? Yeah. It's kind of like that, where you know something's creeping around. Uh, which gives me anxiety. Exactly. And I was like, I don't have the fucking... I can't. I just don't want to deal with this. Yeah. It's fucking with me. Um, I don't know how long that thing is lurking around or anything like that. That's the thing. I'm wondering if I get past this part, like, how long does this last? Like, the, I, I don't know. I can't really talk about it without spoiling, spoiling at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I kind of want to talk to Corey about it a little bit and see what he says. Yeah. But yeah. Corey. That's what I played. Corey. So I've got two beaten games already this year. You're leading so far. Yeah. We have to go over last year. Yeah. We'll probably wait till Corey's yeah. back to do that. Yeah. I think we should. Corey's delaying everything. He's killing us. God. But yeah, that's it. Uh, Rocket League's destroying my gaming. Mm-hmm. I can't stop. But Rocket League, what, what can you do? Yeah, this is gonna be your 2015s, 2016 game. Of the I'd year? be shocked Pro- if it probably. wasn't. Probably, <laughs> especially <laughs> since it's coming out on Xbox now, and you've yeah, you've got reinvigorated Je- Jeff to co-op it with you. Yeah, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Oh, we get to split it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a great thing. We need, to, we need to open a tab. <laughs> right now, you are minus eight. Okay, minus eight. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It's uh, good. All right, Will, what'd you play? I played a lot this week. I kind of spread myself a little thin earlier in the week because I was playing things like Fallout, Skyrim, Metal Gear Solid 5. Skyrim? Um, I'll get to that in a second. 
Uh, what else? Dying Light, Battlefront. Man, you were hitting all of them. I was. Uh, I played Skyrim because I wanted to play something after all the thummies work that I did. Like I wanted to um, play something that I was familiar with. Mm. And I had it slightly modded, uh, and I was like, "It's water." Oh, oh! I thought it was something about to explode. Anyway, I wanted to play something that was familiar, uh, and I had it slightly modded. But I was looking at some of the mods like on YouTube and whatnot, and I was like, "This game," because it doesn't look that good. Like, without gra- the mods. graphically, it doesn't look that doesn't, good. Yeah, it doesn't hold up. And I was surprised because it's not that old. So, like, I wanted to make it look real pretty. Uh, it didn't really look. Too, I mean, texture wise, it didn't look great. Like no. the landscapes were really good, but texture wise, it didn't look that good when it came out. Even I'm kind of wondering if my memory of it was a little, you know, rose colored. Yeah, because um, I didn't think it looked good at all. Because my favorite city is Markarth. Yeah, uh, and I was looking at the water, and it just looked like garbage. The waterfalls. I was like, this doesn't look good. So I was going to get, like, mods and everything like that, which I don't really know how to do. There's, Specifically, I'm going to need your help. There's official, like, HD texture packs. Well, I found a YouTube video of a guy who had all of the mods he was running and yeah. the links to them. I just need to figure out how to get it all going. Yeah, you know I'll send I mean? you. There's a there's a really good guide that explains, like... How to do it. Well, uh, like, the, the, the top mods that, that people get, both graphically and then, like, uh, gameplay enhancement stuff. Okay. Uh, but there's also programs that organize the mods to make sure they don't crash each other. Well, let me, yeah. let me tell you. Okay, you crashed it? I don't know what happened. It's definitely something with my mods, but I can't leave Markarth. I can do everything inside the city of Markarth, but when I leave... I get an infinite loading screen. Oh, yeah. computers. Uh, and I can't leave. I can't fast travel to another area without getting it. So I'm just stuck in Markarth. And just, I love it. but Just delete all the mods. I did, and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm still stuck in Markarth. I think you've got a bug save, buddy. You, uh, you bricked it. It goes, my like because I deleted all of it, and it's like, oh, you're missing your mods. So some of the content yeah. will be missing. I was like, whatever. Uh, and I tried leaving, and no. Yeah, you probably have to start over. Uh, that sucks, but it's all right. I wasn't that far. I was like level five, maybe. Yeah, some of the mods require. There's um, what the hell is it called? Uh, Skyrim script extender. Okay. And that that's a requirement for a lot of like more more sophisticated mods. Like, can I uh, still run this through Steam? Yeah. Okay. Because I like getting the achievements and the time, like tallying my time. It's still gonna run through Steam no matter what. Okay. Like even if you. Because the the Nexus mod manager is the one that that has ha, Nexus mods has the most Skyrim mods on there. Okay, and it's got I the it's think, got the heavier hitters. I think yeah, I think most of them have transferred over because for a while there was a limit on Steam of how big the mods could be. Uh, they've increased that limit, so most of the mods did move over to the the Steam Workshop. I was looking through the Steam Workshop, and it was like I went top rated mods to find like all the good graphics ones, and it was all stupid like oh this armor is in the game like from. Diablo. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want that. Yeah, you need to find a uh, specific... I'll, I'll send you the guide that I used when I modded it, okay. and that'll tell you how to do everything. Because there's a few mods that are s- specifically stability mods. And, yeah. And like I said, one that makes sure they boot in the right order so that there's no crashing. Because my main thing is I just want to make the game look as good as I can make it and have it run through Steam so I can get achievements yeah. and... Have it total my time. Yeah, easier. I mean the the very very easiest thing you can do is just install the HD texture packs that are official. Yeah, um, I think they're in like the DLC part of the Skyrim thing, mm-hmm. uh, and you can just download those and, and okay. install them, and that that'll make it look a lot better and, and without changing the game at all. Maybe my mission this week will be to try to make it look to my liking. Yeah. Uh, so I did that. Uh, the only other two things I'll talk about uh, will be Dying Light and Metal Gear. Uh, mm-hmm. I should say I did beat Life is Strange this year. Okay, um, that was so. your first beaten game of the year. Yeah, uh, so I'm like, I got one. What a game. I can't wait for you guys to play it so I can talk about it. Um, where is it going with this? Okay, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, what? I don't know what I played the first hour of the game. <laughs> no, the intro. It was really good. I liked it, but I was like, oh. "What the hell just happened?" I'm like, "Cause I've never, I've never played a Metal Gear. I have memories of the first one, Metal Gear Solid. The very yeah, and I like I don't, I didn't know because I was like probably like two or three. Yeah, you were young. So when, when this fire, like Atrian Arc guy was walking around and like the zombie, the girl guy thing with it, 
I'm like, well, <laughs> what is this? It only makes a little more sense after you beat it. Just a little bit. <laughs> well, I actually asked somebody at work. I'm like, well, what was that? And I'm like, you can tell me because I guess that makes sense if you've played the other Metal I Gear I can see games. that. The fire guy? The fire guy and the other... Is that the Psycho, child. Ma- Psycho Mantis? Ch- I think the- it's a young Psycho Mantis. Okay. Yeah, because it was told. I was told it was a boss in the other game, both yeah. of them. And I was like, oh, so if I played the other ones, I'd understand it. Yep. But the intro was pretty crazy. I was stressed out while playing it, and I was like, this is really awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, this game plays so good. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm honestly impressed with it. It's pretty awesome. I don't know what I'm doing, really, yet, because uh, I've only played two hours. Yeah. Like, I just got the Fulton. I've been Fultoning, ah. like, everything. <laughs> everything you see. This is like, if I see somebody, like, I just, sh- tr- like, tranquilize them and send them flying. And I'll tell you, that never gets old. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Because, like, they're stunned or whatever, and then yeah. they go up a little bit, and then they go up really Ooh. fast, and they go, ah. yeah. It was awesome the first time I did it. It was awesome the last time I did yep. it. Yeah. <laughs> and it stays so cool. Um... The only thing is, I'm pretty bad at stealth in this game, and I don't know. You guys, did you guys say you liked stealth in this game? Yeah, I did. Thought it was good. It worked. It worked really well. I'm wondering if I'm used to bad stealth. So when I'm playing a good stealth game, I have to get used to it. I mean, it. it usually ended up in a shit storm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would have. I would be stealthy for the first like few minutes of infiltrating an area, and then someone would notice me, and then I just kill everybody. <laughs> and I and I like how it has so the classic sound when you get noticed, and I, yeah. but I like how it slows time too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's very helpful. See, I. I tried to um, stun as many guys as possible. Mm-hmm. So the gun I used had rubber bullets. Okay. That stunned. That's like, that's the tactic I took. I like that yeah. that you can do that. Um, oh yeah. So this game has a lot to it. I can tell already. Uh, so I'm, it's I'm fucking awesome. I'm really looking forward to like playing through it and like figuring everything out. But I put it on the back burner for right now just because I wanted to play through uh, Dying Light, which I'll get to in a minute. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna do Soma and Tomb Raider. Uh, before they get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Because I know I'm going to go back to Metal Gear and Tomb Raider and Soma aren't that long of games. And I can pound them out in like four days if I yeah. like sit down and do it. Soma's like eight 11 hour. hours. Yeah, I read 8 to like 10. So I, that, that won't be too bad. And Tomb Raider was like 15. Mm-hmm. Um, Depends on what you do. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a side stuff junkie. I'll probably do some side stuff too. God damn it. Probably closer to 20 then. Yeah. So... Yeah, in Metal Gear, I really, really resisted doing a lot of... I did some of the side missions, but I was able to mostly do story stuff. And, I'm not exactly And sh- a little bit of grinding. I'm not exactly sure what is the main story right now. It won't make doesn't much matter. sense. Yeah. Okay, okay, it just doesn't. It's all about the gameplay with that game. Yeah, okay. And, and the graphics are really good, too. It ran ran perfectly from day one. Remember, like I said, I couldn't even believe that game existed. Yeah, yeah. no, you're. I can see that. So good. It yeah. really is so good. Um, if it hadn't soured on me, just... Because of Konami, it may have been my game of the year. Yeah, yeah, the stuff with the mother base uh, and the insurance you have to get is it? I can see that like just really fucking stupid. Yeah, the ending lowered my because I, I think I had it fourth on my game of the year list. Okay, uh, it was partly because of the ending, like so the the way the missions got at the end mm-hmm. was that's one of the reasons I stopped playing it too because yeah. that sounded like awful to me. Yeah. I was very frustrated. I heard the ending pretty zany. It's very zany. Always. <laughs> I didn't realize this game was as just out there as it is. Well, that's the thing with the Metal Gear series. I didn't know They've this. all been that way. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> like, you'll think you'll play, you're playing a normal stealth game, and then Psycho Mantis will come, come in on you. Yeah, and you're just like, this makes zero sense. And, like, you're in a cardboard or box. Or Skullface. Skullface, yeah. He's an interesting character. <laughs> I kind of appreciate the zaniness, too. Oh, yeah. A little bit. It's, yes. It's, it's, fun. A, it's a great game. Uh, I, I fucking love it when I played it. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to like playing a lot more of this. It Look. took me 50 hours to beat it at 50% completion. So there's a lot there. Yep. Okay. I looked at Tim, the ho- Tim, I think, has spent maybe over 100 hours playing it. <laughs> and he, uh, but he's he's a Fulton machine. Yeah. Fulton fiend. Yep. Fultoning everything. Yep. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and there's another moment in the mist. My ship couldn't land, and there was those guys chasing me. Mm-hmm. Didn't know. I was like, they're faster than me on a horse. Yep. Oh. Yeah. And it was what, scary. What the hell were they called? I don't remember now. It looks like the people in the hospital who were no, coming wait. after me. Did you have a big weapon with you? No, I couldn't do anything to them. Okay. It's later. That's later? 
<laughs> Basically, they were like they were like illuminating like a bluish color, and yeah. they could yeah. outrun me. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Is that called the honeybee, Dan? The weapon? Yeah, I think that sounds right. Yeah. That mission was fucking sweet. Yes, it was. <laughs> There's a lot. the The story was really good. Like oh, the story so, missions were really good yeah, up until so good. when they got the, the the they did the repetition thing at the end. Oh, is that what happened? I wonder at the what, end? Would, what made them cho- choose to do that. I don't think they chose to. I think they were getting close to deadline time. Wanted to yeah. extend the length a little bit. I wonder right. why. There's plenty there. Yeah. Oh. There would have been enough if they just ended it when they did. Yeah. I think. Is there a moment in the game where you felt like this was going to end, but then it like kind of goes yeah. keeps going? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Then... Probably right before that, right? <laughs> before the repetition stuff. Yeah, I think so. I think that is when the well, that's second game and started. ending. Yeah. And then it goes to the repetition stuff, and you get the real ending. The real ending. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Now I get, I get that now. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing I've been playing a lot of is Dying Light. Uh. This game is awesome. My only complaint with it is the uh, newly infected zombies can outrun me. Yeah. Uh, I get annoyed with that. Because, like, I'll be trying to be stealthy, and then the zombie will just see me out of nowhere and sprint across the map and chase me down. Are you talking about the the night zombies? No. These are the ones that are in the day. They show up on the map as the red. Uh... Okay. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. Dan? Like the red, like pl- like it looks like there's another player out there. Yeah. But it's like turns red mm-hmm. and chases after you. It's the same thing that was in Dead Island. Yeah. Uh, those bothered me too. But can you kill them? Yeah, you can. Okay. I I avoid night a lot. Um, oh yeah, I always slept through the night. I get scared. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to put myself through that anxiety if I didn't have to. Because <laughs> you were talking I had about some good chases. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about being chased in Soma. Talk about when I'm being chased in that game by those things, and I press B. I think oh, it's B way, to look a, back. A different. Different? Oh, yeah. I wasn't being chased. Okay. But there was something out there. Lurking. Wa- watching? Wa- yeah, wandering around. Okay. Okay. Um, but Dying Light is so good. Dan, I'm in the second. I told you where I was, but the second area. I don't know if you got there, Eric. Old, t- old Town? No. Okay. The Old Town? I th- like that area more. Yeah. Because it's way more... I feel like I can get more combos with my agility. Yeah. Uh, going from building to building and, like, free running on, like, wires and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so it's more vertical yeah. than, uh, than uh, Haran. Mm-hmm. Or what? Haran? Haran? Haran, yeah. Um, I really don't like the main character. He's kind of a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was... I, that reminds me. Far Cry 4. I hated the main character's voice. Did you get annoyed by the main character's voice? I don't remember. I thought the oh. I liked him more than um, Voss. See, no, I'm talking about the main character. I'm not talking about oh the, the, the main. character. I'm not talking about oh. uh, Pagan Min. Okay, no, no Voss was shitty. I liked Pagan Min more. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> Pagan Min was quite the character. Yeah. No, I didn't like uh, uh, what uh, RJ. A- RJ, yeah, or something like that. Or a- I didn't a- like his, his voice in the game. I thought it was AJ, stupid. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was the voice of Troy Baker. AJ Gale. Yeah. Was the voice by Troy Baker do we know? No. No. Not in four. Okay, three was maybe three. Maybe three. Okay. Troy Baker does the main voice in, in Dying Light. I like I'm pretty sure. I'd like the main character in Dying Light. Um I'm not paying too much attention to the story. I just know that the G R E kinda screwed me. It's really all I know. Yeah. Um but I really like the game. It's a lot of fun. Uh my character's was pretty weak for most of it. I'm getting to the point now where I can actually take some stuff out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to hoard my bullets as much as I can. And I only ever use it when I'm fighting humans because I don't know if it's just really hard to take them on with a melee weapon in the game or... People? Yeah, people. Well, they, they I mean, they move on. They evade way. and whatnot. And then, like, if they get swarmed, like, you can't you can't fight three it's hard, people. Yeah. Um, so well, that makes sense. You gotta kick. Well, I'm used to being able to be super strong and just being able to kill everything at any moment. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like, even if, like, you as a person had a baseball bat, but were surrounded by three people. Yeah, I couldn't. It's hard. And I tried kicking them, but they just jump back. So I just grab, I just pull out my gun and try to get headshots on them. Yeah. So, like, when I'm going through, um, like, the office buildings and the second area and Old mm-hmm. Town and the radio tower, I just shot them. But I really like Dying Light. Uh, Dan said I'm, like, super two hours away from beating it. Yeah, I'd say you're fairly close. So, um, Were you playing on PC? Yes. Uh, I'm using Dan's copy. So I'm probably going to go home and play it and try and beat it tonight. So, 
But other than that, eh, really nothing. Good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just have a couple, a uh, few brief things that I wanted to cover. I started playing Tomb Raider again in pre- preparation for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, I c- even though I really liked that game, I forgot how much I liked it. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. Uh, it's, You're gonna love the new one. I know. I can't wait for it. Uh, I, I'm I surprised. I forgot how like brutal it was. Yeah. And what a beating Lara Croft takes. Lara Croft takes in uh, the first Tomb Raider. I mean, right at the begin, very beginning of the game, she falls on a rebar spike, and it just stabs through her oh, like, yeah. side right here. That's right. I, f- I forgot about that. Uh, she has a lot. It of, opens like, similarly. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, she just takes a beat, like a beating the the whole game. I'm like, holy crap! She's way tougher than I am. I would have curled up and died. I would have just yeah, right, right off there. the bat, <laughs> right, right in the re- the rebar. Yeah, exactly. Would have curled around it. <laughs> Be like, well, I give up. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm done. Uh, so I really like that. I think I've played maybe uh, six hours. I want to say I'm maybe maybe forty percent through it so far. So oh, wow. um, I'm doing a little more of the collecting stuff than I did the first time I played through it. You're that far already? Yeah, when, I've, I've played six hours. When did you start it? Uh, probably three or four days ago. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you started it today. I was like, holy no, crap, no, 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 no. A few days ago. Uh, still playing a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles X. I'm up to like 45 hours. Did you uh, get your Mac? Not, haven't got my Mac yet. I'm working on that right now, actually. Um, to give you an idea of what the game is like, I spent, I needed to collect three different resources. In the game, there's little like uh, diamonds on the thing that you collect, uh, that you use for, in, it's called Collectopedia, and you unlock rewards by collecting all, the, all that stuff. Um, but I needed three specific things for, uh, for the mission that I was doing. Uh, so I walked around this little, this desert area looking for them for probably like three hours. Didn't find a single one. So finally I was like, ah, screw it. I'm going to look it up and see where it is. Well, once I found out where it was, I had to figure out how to get there. (laughs) It was really hard to figure out how to get there. I probably spent two hours exploring, trying to figure out how to get there. Wow. Um, luckily once I got there, I, you know, found them pretty quickly. I think it only took me like 20 minutes to find the, the things that I need, but uh, yeah, that's to give you an experience of what kind of time commitment Xenoblade Chronicles is. Um, I've not heard for, not for the week. No, no, I've heard if you kind of hurry through the main story, uh, you can get your scale in like thirty hours. Um, but at the same time, it's a little bit hard to hurry through the story because you've got to meet certain requirements to unlock the next story progression. So yeah, I read an article about that, and somebody yeah. said. They wanted to do the main quest, and 15 hours later, he finally got to actually do the next mission. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of, of other requirements that you have to do, like like getting your affinity up with certain party members, or like you, you have to complete, there's um, affinity quests, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, affinity missions that you have to, have to do before you advance to the next storyline, and you got to find that, and you got to make sure you meet the requirements for that affinity mission. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all stuff that I love, though. I still love that game. The game sounds awesome. It's a lot of fun. Would I like it? No. No? Okay. No. I'm saying, I, I'm surprised that Corey, I, Corey, I wanted to talk to about it because he said he played some more and it was interesting. I wanted to figure out what exactly he meant by that, but mm. of course he's not here. No, the only person other than me that I think would like it is our cousin Chris. Okay. So, that's it. Uh, and then the other thing, other thing I played, I spent some time playing the Game of Thrones mod for Mountain Blade Warband. I just found out not that long ago that there was one, and I really like Mountain Blade Warband, so I figured I'd give it a shot. It's a surprisingly accurate recreation of Westeros. So I was very nice. surprised they use all the proper uh, banners and stuff for all the characters. All the like little towns are in there, and all the the big lords and minor lords and stuff are all in there. It's really really well done. I saw so, you were playing Mountain Blade. Yep. Game of Thrones mod for Mountain Blade War. That's pretty cool. It's a fun game. I'm looking forward to Mountain Blade Bannerlord. I haven't heard anything about that. That might be a 2016 release. Okay. I have Mountain Blade War Band. Yeah. It's fun. Should try it. Yeah. I don't know that you'd like it. No. But, well, here's it's got like a over, over, overland map. And like you have your guy. Um, that you move around, you go to different little towns and you recruit soldiers and the sol- those soldiers you level up. When you go into battle, it's third person and you fight third person, uh, it's like like a shitty Skyrim is how <laughs> I would describe Skyrim. it. Um, it's, it's very very art, like old RPG janky type yeah. of thing. 
Um, but I don't know. There's something endearing about that type of game, Fair you enough. know. Uh, you know, it's got the standard like up, upgrading your equipment, up, a ton of stats, a ton of abilities for your characters. Um, it's, it's really, really well done. Okay, uh, you can, I'm I'm not dissuading you from giving it a try. You're right. welcome to. I just don't know that again. Anyone but me would like it. <laughs> it's got that old school RPG jank. Yeah, fair enough. So, uh, um, by the way, there's some Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay going on in the chat. Nice, it looks fucking sweet. Yeah, I really like the looks of that game. It looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Um, and I think that's everything for what we played. Yes, sir. Should we do feedback? Yeah, Let's do it. knock it right out of here. It's then, bedtime. Then call it a pod. It's time for me to go upstairs and watch Game of Thrones. So, I gotta get through. I gotta work line. today. I had somebody take my shift today. Oh, did you? Yeah. Nice. One hour and I didn't. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. This is the first is from Idaho Jake. Uh, this is this is Jake's um, responses for for uh, game of the year stuff or uh, uh, his th- his thummy thummy choices. Uh, so the one that got away, Tomb Raider, which I think is the one that won for us. It yep. is. Corey, I'm actually going to type out the list uh, and give it to Corey for, I don't know if he's going to put it on the website or something. Uh, I checked the website yesterday and there is a spot for thummies. Okay, yeah. Uh, we're a little behind on everything as usual, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> on everything. On everything, yes. Uh, I just posted the, actually the episode on YouTube a couple days ago. It took forever to post it because for whatever reason the upload from Twitch to YouTube kept failing. I don't know why it took like three days for me to finally get it right. And it was like five hours long. It was eight, four hours and 40 minutes. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Uh, so 2014's 2015 game of the year, Far Cry 4 for Jake. Fair uh, enough. Best competitive, Rocket League. Best co-op, but not sure if it counts for 2015, Destiny of the Taken King. Uh, best mobile game, DuckTales Remastered. I haven't, I haven't played that. No. I haven't either. Uh, best rainy day game, Saints Row Reelected. Yeah. I've almost bought that a couple of times. Same here. Uh, welcome surprise, Dying Light. Yeah. Uh, most disappointing, Order 1886. Oh, I gotta disagree completely. Ouch. Uh, Steamy Turd, Elder Scrolls Online. He said it really could have been better, but they don't explain how to craft, and the crafting was bad anyways, plus trying to play with friends was horrible. Yeah. Uh, games he won't play Halo 5 and Cod Blops 3 uh, new IP not sure if it counts but it was a nice change on sports and racing games he picked Rocket League uh, game he wish he played Metal Gear Solid 5 yeah he definitely should play Metal Gear 5 I, absolutely That's def- that'll probably be I bet you could get that for like 30 bucks at some point and that would be a steal it was 30 bucks everywhere during the holidays yeah uh, it's de- definitely worth it. Uh, best console, PS4. Best indie, Ollie Ollie 2. Ambassador game, The Witcher 3. And game of the year for Jake, Fallout 4. Ooh. Nice. He I says, like thanks, that. guys. It's time to get drunk and discuss video games. Uh, th- he sent this to us last yeah. week. And we, I mean. We did the get episode, drunk. We did get drunk. And the episode was like four hours and 30 minutes or something like that. So yeah, it was like one when that's we why, finished. That's why we didn't uh, didn't get to it. The only one else I would dispute is the order. Okay. It's most disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tito in LA, after playing some more of the hockey mode in Rocket League, my opinion has changed. I actually like it. It adds another kind of variety to the game. A lot of wall play and dribbling. Pro tip, don't flip. You'll miss the puck more often than not. And switch ball cam off for wall play. But it's a lot of fun once you know the different style of play. Now my picks. The one that got away, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Wow. This year's last year's game of the year, Hearthstone. He says he wasn't sure what to pick, so Hearthstone, since it's still going strong. Best multiplayer, Rocket League. Best co-op multiplayer, Rocket League. Best handheld slash mobile game, no clue, but I found a Sudoku app by Branium <laughs> Studios, LLC, that actually shows and teaches you advanced strategies to help me solve a Sudoku puzzle I was working on for three years. Wow. So I'm a fan of that mobile app. Holy shit. Jeez. Best rainy day game, Cities Skyline. And Mario Maker. Yeah, I want to play. Ah, I see he agreed with Mario Maker. Nice. I also want to play City Skylines. Yeah, I've almost purchased that. I have it. Oh, you do? That and the DLC. You got it on Steam? Yep. 
Fuck yeah. I bought it as soon because it came out when I didn't have money, and I bought it as soon as I got money. Nice. Again, it's so. supposed to be really good. Yeah. yeah. I've heard nothing but good things about that. Most welcome surprise, Rocket League. Yeah. Uh, biggest disappointment, Evolve. Paid full price and ended up only playing for 15 minutes of it. Yeah. Qu- quickly disappeared off the face of the earth, much like Titanfall for 2014. Totally agree. Uh, Steamy Turd, Batman Arkham Knight. Best under the influence game, Splatoon. Or be a two rock star and play <laughs> rock band while on drugs slash coked up. There you go. Uh, game least likely to play a lot, uh, Bloodborne, Mario Maker, Call of Duty. Oh, fair enough. I know. I know. Bloodborne's something about a, Tito that I appreciate is that he can at least see the good in those games, yeah. even if he's not going to play them. Yeah, I mean, I think Bloodborne caters to a uh, specific taste. Sure. I, I don't think it's a game for everybody. No. Um, it's more for everybody than the Dark Souls games. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's it, it's because it's it, it's. I don't want to say accessible because that's it's not, to, to me know. that's an insult. But uh, it's it's. I think it's easier to get the hang of at the beginning than uh, Dark Souls. Uh, best new IP I want to see more out of Until Dawn. Yeah. Game you wish you played Until Dawn. Life is Strange. Her story. Most valuable console PS4. Best indie game, Rocket League. Best ambassador game, ambassador game, Until Dawn, slash Life is Strange. Best music in a game, uh, Rocket League. He says, I'm telling you, the soundtrack in this game is great. I like it too, Tito. And game of the year, Rocket League. Yeah. I can get behind that talk. Yeah, that's a good list. Okay. Uh, Valerie in Iowa, Iowa says, "Hey athletes, uh, first thanks thanks for a nice lengthy discussion filled with tw- filled 2015 thummies. A few spoilers on Life is Strange, but there was also some decent discussion on the rest of the games from last year. I thought of a few possible additional categories you might like to end up asking a few axing a few existing awards. What do you think? These might be more of individual favorites rather than voted on awards. Favorite entertainment media. Non-video game related. Uh, oh, favorite entertainment media experience of the year, non-video game related. I don't e- have those. Exam- yeah. <laughs> I, I don't either, but she brings up a good example. She says, example, I'm sure Dan would f- would put finally discovering Game of Thrones series on the top of the list. And I totally agree with that. Corey. Corey's back. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> Favorite podcast episode or a particular discussion slash argument of the year? Oh yeah, podcasts. Is she, is she talking about ours? I think specifically. She, yeah, I think maybe our episodes. Oh, okay. Is is my guess? We don't. We only get in arguments during game of the year. Yeah. Talk. It's only occasionally. Yeah. Very rarely do we argue over. The I'm gonna start being year. really mean, I guess. <laughs> so that we can have that. <laughs> have a few more arguments. Uh, favorite in a little bit. Example, I know you all enjoyed how Fallout 4 was announced. Yeah, yeah. totally. Just some ideas uh, I had since the podcast is not only about actual games, gameplay, and story. It's also about the game, video game culture, so why not highlight some of your favorites as well? I do like to have the favorite like podcast moment. <sighs> the the only ha- thing for me is I, don't, I won't remember anything. Yeah, I would have to write down right after it happened. What? Yeah, because like going back and listening when I was doing the the be, uh, best of 2015 episode, like I barely remembered any of that stuff. Yeah, that I said even. So, yeah. Uh, finally, I wanted to talk about Hearthstone Tavern Brawl. I'd removed Hearthstone from my phone uh, over six months ago and just sort of stopped playing. I started back up uh, and started playing Tavern Brawl. I have to say I absolutely love this style of gameplay. As a casual Hearthstone player, deck building was difficult because I just didn't have enough knowledge or even ambition to create complex builds. Each week there's a new challenge that gives an opportunity to try a new deck style or force me to think a certain way about the way I play. Uh, I have learned more about Hearthstone in the past month playing the Tavern Brawl than I did in the six months I played. Thanks for the free content, Valerie in Iowa. You're welcome. What do you think about that, Corey? Oh, I don't know. No comment. comment. No comment. About Tavern Brawl? Tavern Brawl? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, he's got comments. Yeah, it's good to, yeah, have, it's good to have an to talk about Hearthstone. Talk about Hearthstone. But, uh, but uh, she's, uh, right. she's right. Have any of you guys, tried? Any of you guys tried Tavern Brawl? Tavern Brawl? No, no, I actually re-downloaded Hearthstone. Not recently. Okay. 
Okay. I haven't put it, played it, but I re-downloaded it. I thought I was going to play it, but I just never did. Yeah, she's yeah, dead she's on. She's dead it on. It mixes up, mixes up game modes. Game modes. Mixes all the all formula. Kind of rules, rules and stuff. And stuff. Uh, uh, I think their I think goal, their goal was it, to, to make things rely more on chance than skill. So, I like a nice mix of both. Yeah. Really do. Yeah. Which is what, I mean, I've said this before, but I, I like magic better because of the whole mana thing and not having mana be a set amount every right, turn. Right. Because you can have the best strategy in the world, but if the cards don't go your way, you know, I, I like that you have to ad- adapt to that or be able to adapt or lose. Yeah, but, I mean, sometimes you, it's not even a game in Magic the Gathering, like, yeah. because of that. Well, I mean, you could have. Um, well, I guess we won't get into magic because what's the <laughs> point? But because mostly because I wanted to hear. Did you have any other thoughts on Tavern Brawl? No. Okay, I wanted to get your thoughts on Oculus. Oh. Before we go, real quick. On what I mean, specifically you, the before, cost. Yeah, the cost. Are you are you out at this point? Uh, probably. It's just too much, you know, for me right now. I, when we were talking about, it, I was saying you because you have to get a new graphics card. Yeah. Um. So that's at least probably three hundred bucks on top of the six hundred dollar price tag for the Oculus. That's that's a little out of my reach. Yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on the whole thing? I don't think. I mean, I think it's a lot of money, but it's. I don't think you can really compare it to a console because it's not. You know, it's a new tech product. Yeah. Uh, and I think people who are just tech junkies will buy into it, and people who just have money that see it as a cool thing will buy into it. Yeah. Um, it's. I think it's bigger than you know something for gamers. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of gamers feel that it's overpriced, but I don't think that will matter as much as like if a console came out and was overpriced right. for the product itself. Yeah. I think console gamers think it's overpriced. I don't know if PC gamers think that. Yeah. We kind of talked about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. More. I mean, I guess it depends because I'm a PC gamer and I think it's too much. Yeah, but... yeah fair enough. But I, I so, think a lot of PC gamers already splash that kind of money anyway yeah. for that stuff. So, like, they're kind of used to it. And I said, so, you know, some people are willing to... Because, I mean, we're we're poor man's PC gamers, Corey. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, we we would duct tape our computers together if, if we needed <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, yeah, when, you, when you're talking about, like, the PC gamer who all he cares about is his rig... You know, and what he's, yeah. you know, what cards he's yeah. running in SLI or Crossfire or what have you, then no, it's not too much, but yeah. For yeah, people, and people like us who. People spend 200 bucks on a keyboard and. Yeah. Uh, 100 and Don't blink twice. 120 on a, on a mouse. Right. So. I couldn't fathom doing that. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't either. I mean, I, I usually go for the low to mid range stuff. I mean, my keyboard's a, a mid range, but I upgraded from a low range mouse to a medium range mouse makes a difference um but i don't know that i would see a huge difference from a 50 dollar mouse to a 120 dollar mouse you know what i mean and like, even if like, I, I did don't, i don't i don't know how, how much of a difference it would make but my mouse is 20 or 25 or whatever yeah. and it's phenomenal well this is my first gaming mouse that cory bought me yeah um and just the the difference from this because it was 20 or 25 the difference from this from like the this type of thing that I was using before is enormous. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm I'm glad you got back in time, Corey. I wanted to get your thoughts on on yeah, Oculus. I think, and it's also uh, the type of thing where they're the first to announce their price, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can always drop the price. You know, yeah. If the sales are really that bad, I don't think they will be. I think the sales will be just fine. Um, but if they are real bad, you can always drop the price. Uh, yeah. Even though it sounds like they're already selling it at a loss, um, but that's where you know the whole Facebook acquisition comes in. How much would it have been if Facebook didn't pitch in? Well, I, would they, would they have been able to charge six hundred bucks for it if Facebook hadn't come in? I don't think they would have been able to charge that much. Why? Because they they would have had to have a profit on their on their product. You know. No, that's what I'm saying. I think they would have had to either lower the cost of components or charge more. Yeah, I don't think it. That's what I'm saying. I, I think I think six hundred wouldn't have been the price point. Yeah, I think it would have been higher. 
or lower, like I said, if they use less quality right. components. Because the dev kits were only right. 300 350 yeah. bucks. Yeah. Well, I don't know, because when you get a company like Facebook, which has global reach in terms of manufacturing, they can get the best components at the most competitive prices. Yeah. Um, what do you... What, what, one other quick question. What do you think... Um, Say uh, Sony and HTC announced that their headsets tomorrow are five hundred bucks. What do you think, Oculus? I, I don't even know the Oculus and Sony's thing are even competing with each other. Oh, I don't really think not. they are. Uh, yeah. So HTC comes out and says their headsets five hundred bucks. I mean, what do you think Oculus's move at that point is? Eh, Ours is better. I don't know what like release date matters. Is, is Oculus the first in the in the queue? I don't know. You should also remember that that comes with Eve Valkyrie, another game, and an Xbox One controller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's packaged with the HTC's uh, product? Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know their controller is supposed to be really good, but I don't know if it's coming with it. Because Oculus's controller is coming out later. The touch, yeah, I got pushed back, but I, I think your pre-order also got you at least first shot at that, if yeah. not one. I'm not sure. To me, like all that stuff uh, is uh, shopping stuff for gamers. You know, like that's gamer shopping stuff. Um, I think for like a m- more mass market. I'm not sure that those games packaged in would mean as much as like, or even uh, that controller. The, yeah, the ubiqu- ubiquity of the Oculus, like seeing it everywhere on Facebook, you know, because you're mm-hmm. gonna uh, you're gonna see a million viral videos of the Oculus. Um, <laughs> who knows if you're gonna see that with HTC? I don't know. I really don't know. I just I just think Oculus can afford to charge more. Yeah, uh, because of it's it's going to be everywhere. Yeah, I was going to say I think Oculus too is going to be more flexible in the other things that it can do. Yeah, I think HTC's thing is going to be for gaming. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Well, but I, I think mean, Oculus, Oculus is really general device. It has infinite resources, and I'm not just talking about money, access. You know. Yeah. Everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's going to know about Oculus. I'm not on Facebook. How dare you? Well, I am, but I don't you know, know what I mean. <laughs> I'm the one person that doesn't really use it. <laughs> Two people, maybe three people in the country that doesn't really use Facebook. I'm the other. <laughs> <laughs> you got a couple in this family. Yep. Hermogens. I'm not really on social <laughs> media at all. Neither I. I have Instagram. That's it. I don't have anything. I used to have Twitter even. I, don't even do I can that. respect that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I well, just... I explain why. It's because of the election. Oh, and sure. And the oh, stuff yeah. on Twitter is just brutal. I don't want to hear it. I just delete people if I get annoyed. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I think it would do Sony well to release a bundle, a competitively priced PlayStation bundle. Ooh. What would like that be? A, like 700? 700 bucks? 700. Probably. That would entice me, really, because you're not only are you getting a bitching console, you're getting access to virtual reality. Yeah. Mm. Say they announce a bundle, Corey. Ready? Yeah. You get your PS4, your your VR, and it comes with No Man's Sky for seven hundred. What do you say? <laughs> VR supported No Man's not Sky. Not pretty good. You you have your cold on No Man's Sky. How about E Valkyrie? That's supposed to be the game for VR right now. Eh. <laughs> You're bigger on No Man's Sky we than Eve Valkyrie. game, and then he goes sour on it. <laughs> Free game. It, 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 for for, for me, game. like the the games themselves don't mean anything because I don't know. Like they all sound great conceptually. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if I have a virtual reality headset, I'm going to be able to play free. You know versions of really cool experiences tech yeah. demos yeah tech demos with the virtual reality headset and th- that might be enough really right. to keep me satisfied mm-hmm. okay yeah i don't necessarily know as if i'm in the need for a you know 10 to 20 hour virtual vr experience i don't yeah i just imagine playing like i just want it because it seems fucking cool yeah no, I think you're right. I think it's going to be 
at least at least at first until because I mean obviously eventually they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. I think for now because they're so clunky, I think you're looking at an hour or two here and there mm-hmm. experiences and not. Like I wouldn't be able to sit, sit down and play The Witcher for eight hours with Plus, a like, VR headset. You know, it's it's the it's not made for a family guy. No. So like, if I'm gonna have kids, I can't have something strapped to my face all the time when I'm at home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I don't even like look like turning around to play my computer when the kids are around. Like yeah. I can play the the Wii or 3ds, but even like the isolation of turning and facing my back to the rest of the living room is right. scary. I mean, my son's fine, and he always was, but my daughter gets into everything, so I can't even, I can't even take my eyes off of her for two seconds because <laughs> she's into something that she shouldn't. Get a, yeah. get a leash. Or, oh, I hate seeing leash people in public with those kids' leashes. Just God. get a baby Bjorn, man, and just leave her in it. She spent a lot of time in our baby Bjorn when she was little. Yeah. She's like a stone now, though. <laughs> All right. That's our thoughts. Should we call it a pod? Do you want yeah. me to just quickly go through my nibble bits without any conversation, just so I don't feel yeah. like they're wasted? Yeah, we sure. We might have done them. Yeah, I think we... we was one of them Assassin's Creed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we went through everything. One. Set in Egypt. Yep. Yeah. Come in 2017. Major League Gaming. Yep. yep. Purchase. Uh, mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VI mod. We didn't do that didn't one. Didn't do that oh. one. Uh, Final Fantasy VI mod for the PC replaces the new sprites with the old ones, so all you complainers can have it the way you want it. Thank God. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the new sprites. But. Uh, and I'll, the other one I'm, was a Russian man addicted to Fallout 4 lost his wife and his job. Oh, yeah. And is suing Bethesda for damages. Oh, oh you fucking asshole. Some, someone brought up the point that uh, if that was a thing that you could do, Blizzard would have been out of business a long time ago with World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. That's like... Uh, I have no sympathy for that guy. Th- it made me think of a story that happened to me at work today. So he stops this person for stealing, right? It's a mom, her son. So the mom's probably in her 60s. The son's probably about my age, about 30. He's got his little son with him who's probably like two. The mom, the old mom, had stolen, I don't know, 15 cookies probably. But they're like 13 bucks a pound. It would have been, you know, 15 bucks or so. She stuffed them down her jacket. Setting a great example. Yeah, exactly. So myself and the security guy, we stop her and... He's trying to explain to her, you know, I'm not going to call the cops on you, but I need you to come back inside because he can, like, issue fines and stuff like that. She was being fine. The son was being an asshole and making it way worse than it needed to be after she was stealing. Mm -hmm. And she says to him, he said he's not going to call the cops on me. I'm just going to go in with him. And he goes, well, he's probably not being honest. He's not being honest. (laughs) You're stealing. You're stealing. So it just made me think, like, this uh, guy's suing somebody because he's being a dickhead. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yep. Even the, the lawyers said, oh, we just want to see how far it can go. Well, yeah, they just want to make a buck. Yeah. No question. Well, yeah, that, what do they give a shit? No, they don't care. They, 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 you know, they get a big payday uh, if they win, and if they don't win, they get legal fees. Well, yeah. and if, if they win, what they do is they make a commercial that says... Has your life been affected by Fallout 4? Yeah. Did you guys see the uh, article I tweeted today on our on our Twitter? Which one? From the Onion. Oh. It's really good. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna I, I'll butcher it. Let me pull it up. It was basically about um, gun control relating to to video games. <laughs> and you know nice. the Onion. Oh yeah, always fantastic. I, love the onion. I like the not the Onion. It's entitled, Nation Fondly Recalls When Just Regulating Video Games Seemed Like Solution to Gun Violence. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. It's got a Grand Theft Auto picture. (laughs) It's worth a read. I like it. Uh, All right. Shall we call it a pod? Yeah, it sucks. Did I miss anything? Um... What we played, you missed all of that. Yeah, Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about Xenoblade, but we'll just talk about it next week. Yeah. Oh, I still I still want to do an episode on Xenoblade. Yeah. I thought maybe the Thursday, because Eric's probably not going to be able to join us Thursday before his wedding, right? I won't. Let me pull up We'll account. try and plan it for for a week when Eric, Eric's going to be gone. I won't be here in two weeks. Okay, so maybe we'll do it then. Yeah. 
I'll be in Virginia. Okay, that that that'd be the perfect time to do a Xenoblade episode. Corey, oh, did you? I want Eric to be there for it. Go ahead, Will. Did you finish <laughs> listening? To I already the explained dummies? a little bit to Eric. Yeah. Uh, did we spoil Life is Strange too much? Uh, I can't remember specifically now, but there was one thing that was said that I felt like was was a, spoil- a little too much of a spoiler. Okay. But otherwise, I thought it was vague enough. Okay. To, to make our point. Maybe it's because I was drunk, but I don't feel like anything was spoiled for me. Yeah. That was uh, fair. I think, I think Dan might have said it. Somebody might have said that if you had already played a good amount of it, then more of it would have been spoiled if, than if you just played none of it or a little of it. Okay. Yeah. Then you wouldn't have realized what we were talking about. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, sorry, Valerie, we didn't try. I was to, very confused. Uh, well, to be fair, though, you did say there could be spoilers. Yeah. Uh, and, said. and we were drunk. And we were drunk. Oh, yeah. Nah, I was the one that probably spoiled it. And that's the one. when the spoilers start flowing. <laughs> Falling like wine. Yeah. You know what I All noticed? Right. Go ahead. Sorry, last thought. That's right. Uh, <laughs> is how often I say things are silly and stupid when I've been drinking and we're doing a podcast. Those really? are the only adjectives I can that come up with. Stupid, that's silly. Yeah. You did say silly a lot. Yep. Like a ton. Sure did. And I kept doing that right brother thing. Did you? Oh, yeah. I don't that. Yeah. I was just happy that you and I had a peaceful existence this year, Corey. Yeah, we did. We did. Oh, nice. For the most part. I don't, yeah, I don't think. We'll have to no, change that for next year. The only two arguments were Undertale and the console. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The Undertale you, argument really was No, there. I still think I'm in the right on that argument. After you were, going back and listening to it. You were saying the same thing Dan was saying. <laughs> you were also yelling at me, and I was just sitting here. No, you guys were telling me my reason wasn't good enough, and I was trying to stand up for myself. I don't okay. think I yelled at any point. No, you were. I, 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 know, never, I know I didn't yell at any point because I listened to it. You were getting very vocal. You raised your voice a little bit, but I, I oh, remember... you sound that, like my girlfriend. I... <laughs> That's what I've always wanted. <laughs> I remember saying to you, "You're making a pretty good case for Undertale, yeah. like making me want to play it." And, and that wasn't your ob- objective. <laughs> if uh, if sober me could have interjected, drunk me, I would have said, "Well, you know, it is my number three indie game, so I am yeah. making a good case. I'm just explaining why it wasn't higher." Yeah, no, it was, it was did funny. I, but, but did I give you a hard time why it wasn't? Because you were like. I felt like you were to leap across the table. Yeah, you were getting upset a little bit. And how you're like inflection and how you're moving your hands. <laughs> and me and Dan were just looking at well, you. The, like, the, 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 uh, whatchamacallit, the hand motions and stuff, I, I don't remember. I'd have to watch the video for that. Yeah. You uh, thought he was Italian for I, a few minutes. I talk with my hands on occasion too. But honestly, in going back and listening, I didn't think I was overly animated or upset. Oh. I was just trying to drunkenly sure. make my case. You were. I, it was just funny. It was funny. <laughs> oh, the memories. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll do it for episode 233 of the Thumbstick Athletes podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Eric. Will. Corey. Thanks for listening and get out of my basement. All right. What do we want to do for next week? Um, 